Uh, ladies and gents, welcome to the grand final of the second season of Titans League. We have had uh, 260 games in Platinum. I've covered every single one. It's been a lot, and that's before we even talk about gold and silver. And uh, thank you, everyone, for following this season and being excited for it. Uh, here we have the two best players, undoubtedly, uh, making it to the final, the two fan favorites. We have the Viper in the yellow, and we have Hera in the blue. And I expect these colors to stay consistent in this series, and I expect the play to be super consistent and high level. Uh, Hera's gone for the Mongols on Shoals, a map that we haven't actually seen him play very frequently. It was actually his most banned map in the entire tournament. So starting off the grand final with this map will be interesting. And we got Viper. Uh, while he hasn't played this that frequently, he's got the Bohemians on Shoals. And Viper picked, picking a civilization here that I thought he might have been saving for Arena later on. So Dave and I will have plenty of time to talk strategies and where we think the civilizations are going to match up. But uh, anyways, on this map, you've got the tower on the front that can protect your fish. The fish is a focus, but we've seen plenty of instances where players will actually delay any heavy, heavy aggression on water. Um, the long-term focus is to prioritize and control these golds. Uh, the only thing they're really protected by would just be a couple crocodiles, which you could easily fight through. And we'll see exactly how aggressive Hera wants to be here with all this precious Mongols hunt here. Um... And, you know, I want to just talk briefly about the players and what I've seen from them. So Hera has been electric on the land maps. He's been insanely aggressive. And at least, like, compared to his friend Leary, he's seemed more well-prepared for a lot of the mixed maps. Now, I've been casting Hera and Viper for a very long time, and we've seen different versions of them. And for Viper, uh, we had seen him play in a final against Hera on a tournament called Warlords, which was a nine-villager start, so a bit different. But the idea was it was a mixed map tourney. It wasn't just one type of map. And Titans League kind of has a similar format. And with how good Jordan played and how good Tato played strategically and just all the things that they threw against Viper and how Viper was able to just slap it away like it was nothing, I, I, I think there's a vibe right now. I've even had Hera fans saying to me this morning, they're rooting for Hera, but they feel like Viper is the favorite here. I don't know if Dave's going to actually... Uh, agree yeah, yeah, or disagree I'm on I'm, that. I'm just, I'm, I'm listening. I'm you're listening good. And I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's like you know when you, you know when your underdog team makes a deep playoff run, or they're high up in the standings, and then you come up against the best team, and the pundits are all saying, "Yeah, there's a chance," but deep down, you know. As a Vikings fan, probably... I definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> Especially them this year with all the comebacks they made at insane season. You just knew they weren't going anywhere at the yeah. end of the day, right? <laughs> but it's like, it's a situation like that. No, I'm not going to compare Hera to like uh, a super underdog here because I think he's playing amazing. Sure. And that Arabia game versus Leary yesterday, like, I don't know how he survived that long. Leary obviously ended up taking it, but that was an incredible game. However, the set Viper had against Tato, like he just showed all of his strengths in the draft. Uh, on the Ghost Lake game, just the the patience that he has, especially when he's heading into late game and the um, carry he takes to analyze the Civ matchups and know exactly what type of units he needs to go into. Mm -hmm. It's just fantastic from yep. him. It's it's amazing. Hera is going to get up to Feudal Age a lot faster in this game, and he's gone for the two-dock galley approach. So he's going to try and snipe down the fishing ships from Viper. But Viper's playing as the Bohemians, and it feels like he can just kind of give up that water early, uh, go for a land boom, and then play towards the late game. Yeah, it, this is something that Hera has done. He, he did it on Scandinavia. He's basically done this on any water map. Uh, he just goes mm -hmm. up really fast, and he makes a lot of ships, and he tries to kill fish. So I'll be interested to see how much value that brings Hera here. It feels like he's going to have an opportunity to kill Viper's fishing ships. However, we have seen instances where, you know, the more casual approach of building up towards uh, the mid game can sometimes be superior to committing a lot on the water. So Harris, right now with two galleys, he's coming forward. Viper does have a sea tower to protect his fish, and so that's the big difference here. If this was, if the sea tower wasn't there, I think Harris' approach would be dominating Viper, and we'd be trying to think of ways that Viper could possibly survive. If the Sea Tower wasn't there, this map would be played out a lot differently, I think. Correct. It yep. might just be a full-on water battle early. Yep. Uh, we've seen that sometimes, but usually players can manage to save a few of their fishing ships against that Sea 
or with that C Tower, mm -hmm. Viper's not even bothering. He's Justin. not. He's not. He's not even trying. I think he's actually really distracted. Hera's scout is attacking Viper. <laughs> it attacked true. him at the same time. And I think that was probably part of it here. This is the first game, right? And, uh, you know, Hera tends to be a much faster at the start of a series. So a good start here from Hera. He actually sniped all three fishing ships. And that is not mm -hmm. something that we really expected, I think, when, when doing our intro. I think what Viper is going to do, and yeah, he's queued up a couple galleys. So he's going to wait until he has two galleys. He's going to hope that Hera adds fish. And then when Hera's not hanging out near that dock because of the sea tower, He'll send the galleys out and sneak them around. Hera needs to see this flag yep. on the dock and be aware of that possibility because he's not adding in any other ships behind this, and he could invest in the fishing ships and then just lose them right away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Hera's thinking, okay, I killed his fish. Now we're going to add more, and yep. Viper is sneaking around. It's kind of hard to see the uh, the flag on the dock because you do have to leave your ships exposed. And I think Hera yep. seeing the blacksmith now is like, what would he get upgrades for here? And also, I don't know if you've well, noticed this, but Viper kind of had a villager headed to the north, and he's come back now with that. So I think, like, maybe he wanted to sneak something and go for an archer range, and then Hera's scout ran by that villager, oh, so Viper abandoned the idea. Hera's super fortunate to find these galleys, Tristan. That is a massive deal here. He did not see the flags on the dock. Mm -hmm, yeah. He didn't see the galleys coming out of the dock. He just sent his galleys back towards the middle, and he ended up finding the galleys from Viper, as Viper is getting fletching now. Mm -hmm. So Viper is fully investing back on the water, and that has to be unexpected from Hera after Viper gave up his fish so early. It is. It's unexpected for me as well. I think this is this is a sign that Viper's initial strategy was to compete a bit more and keep his fishing ships alive at the very least. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing two galleys in queue for Viper's dock. He did actually just attack a Hera villager now, there, and there yeah, was some quick wash shenanigans. But uh, yeah, I mean, Hera currently... As he's even adding a stable right now, he's certainly been faster for the aggression. Now he's got to protect his vill, though, and he's this. distracted on water. This could be a quick wall for Hera. First game of the finals. Let's see. Nope. And Viper, nope. he's going to block it off, and Viper's yeah, going to get away. Viper knows the quick wall is better than anyone else. Hera's very fast, but Viper's always going to position his scout in a good spot to avoid that. But he does lose the scout. Very avoidable loss there. Agreed. But I guess he's focused on the center. Trying to fi snipe the fishing ships, trying to avoid that fire from the tower. And he has sniped two fishing ships. So yep. it's not bad. He's probably going to get a s uh, third one here. No. This would be this would be a good win for Hera right now. I think Viper, uh, on a like if this was game four, saves those fishing ships initially and then doesn't mm -hmm. lose that scout. And so Hera's going to have multiple scouts now. So Viper will have no way of scouting it. And Hera, even though he's lost some fishing ships, has had, in my opinion, the better economy here. He's had really yeah. nice transitions. This would be an amazing start to the final for the Canadian. It's it's so weird. We haven't seen the scout opening. We haven't seen extended feudal play really in this map. Always mm -hmm. one player going FC, and now we're in the finals. And both players have decided that they're going to go for this extended feudal age. Yeah, it's true. Hera, I think, with the scouts here, with Viper having no knowledge that he's added extra scouts can almost wait for Viper to head out with the villagers and then mm, pounce on them. Maybe, yeah. And he might even want to, like, hide these or keep a scout nearby and wait for these vills to come out on either side. If he sees them on the other side and his scouts are positioned, let's say, in the north, he can always come back across the middle Yeah, with those scouts. It won't take them very long. I think Hera needs to make sure that he's either killing villagers with these scouts or holding map control. I think diving for vill kills and, and underneath a TC and taking any massive risk could be bad for you. Let's see if Viper's paying attention. Viper Viper's not notice. expecting this. He didn't see oh, it at boy. all. Oh, this is going to be rough for him, especially with that gold back there. He can quick wall those villagers in, but they're going to be stranded. He doesn't Viper know. need to try and save this one. Does he not realize he's so focused on the galleys? Wow. He doesn't realize about the villagers. Oh my god, Hera with some huge damage here. This is, I, and I have to say, with all the crazy things we've said from Viper, very unlike him. He hasn't reacted yeah. at all to this. It's been very slow. The scout had gone down earlier, and Hera finds value that he was looking for. Way more value than he was looking for. As and Viper's like, also sending a villager to the middle right now? Like, I, yeah, this I, is just I don't really know what's weird. Going on. Yeah, Viper clearly, like, the reaction there, or lack thereof, shows how unexpected this strategy is on yep. Shoals. Yep. For Hera to go for the scouts, and maybe that's why Hera chose it, right? Maybe it's not optimal, but it's optimal to the way in which people play this map currently. And he's already gotten 
numerous villager kills. Let's mm -hmm. see, the scouts have four villager kills. He's killed the fishing ships early. He's trying to take out this villager, and he's probably going to get her. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is just not the Viper that we expected with our little introduction. But it is the hair. This is the thing about the consistency. This is the hair that we expected. You know he's going to be aggressive. It's just, is the strategy going to suit the situation? And is he going to be able to surprise the Viper? The aggression has worked out so wonderfully here. He's going to get another villager mm -hmm. kill. And, it, I mean, it just is not stopping here. The pain in Viper's base. I don't know what a faster Castle Age necessarily brings you when you have no map control here. Yeah, and you have enough resources to make one TC. You're going to have to go for a Spearman just to protect your TC foundation, wherever yeah. that might be. It's really rough, and it's not like your opponent is fully committed to Feudal Age. Hera's on the way up right now. Hera has Mongols. He has the ability to make, like, Step Lancers to come harass you, get through these walls, and the front of your base is still wide open. Yeah. This is so brutal for Viper, and I think Viper, from this point forward in the game, knows that he's significantly behind. And just needs to make it competitive. Absolutely. That should be your objective, right? Just give yourself a chance to win. It shouldn't be victory anymore. <laughs> just don't completely throw the first game. <laughs> I think Viper, he's he's going to be happy as at least killing a couple of these scouts. He does extra damage. Hera, though, with some good groupings. He's going to ha happily do it again here. Yeah. And that's just Hera realizing that, well, maybe I'm not going to get out of here alive anyway. Oh, you don't go back for that, though. Like... I don't know, man. He lost three scouts there. Feels like they could have gotten some more value for sure. Let's see what Hera does as a follow-up. Hera he could lose this villager to crocodiles. A big part on this map. There's always four of them they there. They ganged up, bro. They ganged up. <laughs> and Hera, that actually really hurts his follow-up because he wants to go for a siege workshop. So probably a little frustration yep. for him. Again, that's always been a part of the map here. But he's looking for damage just... constantly, man. Like, Hera yeah. is, is always... He sees, senses there's blood in the water, and like a shark, he's just not letting Viper rest. He can go immediately for two town centers and a siege workshop if he wants. And yep. like you said, that villager kill or the crocodile kill on the villagers is really going to stall out his momentum. Imagine if he had a villager forward here. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh my god, Viper would be under so much pressure. Viper is still sniping the fish. So he's still finding value with these Ooh. galleys, and he takes out two more fish. That's actually kind of big, because Hera had a huge advantage in that he still had control over the water, but it's only one fishing ship now. Yeah, just just reading a comment here, someone said, uh, disaster start for the Viper, but he can win anyways, right? Like, stuff mm -hmm. like this happens. You said how good Tato and Jordan had played, and when Viper gets into that form, he can definitely bring it back. It will be interesting, though. It's rare... That we see players start off or with town TC. centers and not have a TC on the gold. That's what Hera's going to go uh, do now. And he is, is actually going for four TC boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think he's going four TC because that villager died. Yeah, just, just like... It would take him so long boom. to... Yeah, and you looked at his wood situation. He had a lot of wood in the bank. I think he had 1,200 wood in the bank mm -hmm. or something like that. And he actually sold 200 wood to buy stone for that TC. So it was definitely him adapting the strategy uh, to suit his resources. He did get light cav, and he's still being a threat on Viper's side. Viper, 44 villagers, getting fervor, getting wheelbarrow. So this is just classic Viper, right? I'm in damage control mode. I'm not going to go for aggression. I'm just going to YOLO onto economy and hope that you can't do any damage to me. So Viper, this is all intentional from him. He built two additional town centers. One was on the gold and wood. One was on the stone and wood. And Bohemians well, with those mining upgrades. Don't they're... lose another Villa, Hera. Uh, no, he'll okay, be fine that, here. That crocodile was weak from before, okay. <laughs> he'll be fine here. He'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, it feels like, you know, Hera's very mindful of this as a possibility. Yep. But Viper wants to get a castle up eventually and, and get it onto mm -hmm. the gold spot. So, you know, for Viper, he doesn't have pikemen yet. Hera's actually been really resourceful here with his galleys there on that shoreline. But yep. Hera also saw the TC. You know Viper's on stone. You have to know that Viper wants to take one of these sides here so shortly. <clears throat> also, if there's a player that can sit in the corner with a p seemingly no gold access and still have like 2,000 in the bank, it's probably Viper, Yeah, right? for sure. <laughs> like he only ever spends on what he desperately needs at that moment and he'll save his gold. He'll keep it in the, in the back pocket for the push eventually so we'll see if he can actually make that push the light cab need to probably hang out on the right side here although Hera just keeps coming back to the middle looking for damage it is really interesting that Hera hasn't as Viper's going to make an outpost in the north uh, he hasn't he, it, 
mined any stone. He hasn't placed a TC on stone. Like, he's got yep. stone spots, and he scouted them. And, okay, now he's going to go to stone. But very late for the Mongol player, and very late for a player yep. on Shoals to not be prioritizing stone. He should make outposts at the top, too, and maybe get Town Watch. Um, but right now, Harriet is still ahead, right? He's getting Wheelbarrow. He's got four TCs. Villager count is still climbing. Viper is going out to the north. Ooh. Viper is going to the north. Does he see those houses? He does see the houses. He's going to go along the shoreline, even though Hera had the galleys, which are... Well, the galleys are dead now. Ooh. No, they're on the right side. Yeah, they're, they're there. Viper tried to demo them. Hera knew that there was going to be some activity here. And Viper, while he did kill a Lycav there, his villagers are going to get found. Great awareness from Hera. Just more and more value from the Lycav. And now he knows he might need something more, where he is now dropping a monastery on his gold side. Yeah, Viper's got to switch to the south now, I think. This this gold is just not doable. I don't know why he didn't go to the south in the first place. Maybe he wants to kind of secure this stone. He as could do well. both. Yeah. Yeah. Hera needs to. I honestly feel like Hera wins this game if he had siege in the north and he adds outposts in the south. He's got an incredible mm -hmm. economy. He just needs to make sure he invests the proper amount to stop these types of pushes and wait till he can get some castles down here with the Mongols. It was the dream start for Hera. Can he finish off game one? Look at the farm eco behind for him, too. Yep. 36 farms already for Hera. Viper's farm eco is kind of sick, too, though. 40 farms for him. No siege for Hera, no castle. His resources are flying, though. It looks like he could click up to Imp soon. He has stopped Viper from advancing much further on the side. He's already locked down. And Viper's going to drop a castle on the shoreline, which tells me that he believes that Hera has locked down the south as well here. So Viper really no confidence to move out. Spearman running into the TC too. That's unfortunate. Hera's going to start grabbing these relics. So he'll have plenty of gold this game. And Viper doesn't quick wall the castle. What? Very weird here, man. I mean, he's got a monk there, sure. But Hera's just getting more and more value from the Lycav. And Hera will imp soon. Uh, I'm thinking it's got to be Mangadai with the Mongols, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just curious yep. of where Hera's going to drop his castles. I'd like to see the castle maybe behind the TC on the side. Just make sure that it's not in a position where Viper can trev it down. Oh, I think you have all that vision and the monks in front of it. I think you can I think you can make it near that monastery somewhere. Yeah, maybe. But production's gonna be needed, right? He's still making light cav though. He, honestly, he he doesn't see that many spearmen from Viper. He, Viper's probably hoping that Hera uh is gonna continue with light cav, but at the same it's... token, he doesn't he hasn't shown Hera that many spearmen, so Hera might think that light cav is actually still an option for him. It's so weird, right? Like, Viper sees the TC, sees university, sees the monastery, sees the houses, sees the military. And at no point has he decided to go to the south. Mm -hmm. Yep. At no point. He's just, like, hard committing to this area. So maybe he feels like Hera's got some villagers, he's got a presence here. If I manage to kick him off, um, then I can do a lot of damage at the same time as gaining gold access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, for, for him, he just assumed, right? Hera is now there. But there was an opportunity earlier, and when you're playing, like, when you're behind uh, seven minutes into this game, it's really hard to have that game sense, even though it is the snake here, to know that that area is exposed. But this is going to be the area that Viper wants to push. He's already getting chemistry now. He's massing lots of spearmen, and we hadn't seen Hera play safe castles. He's placing a castle like he wants to win a treb war, so I'm a little concerned here for Hera that his unit composition isn't going to be able to stop the Bombard Cannons and the Halves. Well, he is getting a second castle down already, too. Yep. And that's on the left. So he should win the initial treb war. However, that transition time for Viper is going to be difficult. Viper now going for barracks and some archer ranges behind that. I mean, how many villagers from Viper have also been saved by having Sanctity and Fervor this game? It yeah, feels those like are Hera, big upgrades. Every single time he tries to snipe Vils, they're just saving themselves. It's a good point. For the extra HP or the speed. Hera needs to go double trebs right away. Trebs right away. Don't play any games here. He's starting off with one treb. Viper will see that castle. Viper still hasn't clicked Pikeman, by the way. It, yep. it, it's an upgrade that probably should be clicked. There it the is. The same the same thing in that Arabia game versus Tato yesterday, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Like 11 spearmen, no Pikeman, and then they just all died. Does manage to convert a galley. Will he get this light cap? He does not. He loses some more monks here. However, Viper's eco for the position he was in. It's looking pretty good at this stage of the game. And Hera, we all know that Mongols have a very slow transition. Even with 125 villagers, even with 50 on food, 
even with 29 on gold, it's going to take him a long time to get into his ideal army. I think Viper has a faster push for sure. Yeah, and it'll be interesting because both players are committed here. Viper needs the gold soon. Otherwise, he could be dead. Hera is mining all the gold here. So this is going to swing solely based on this side. We should also say that Viper doesn't have a lot of stone income, that there is stone available. He's just not taking right now. Now, Bombard Cannon number one out of the Siege Workshop now for Viper. If he can start to snipe Hera's Trebs, as Viper again fails a couple little quick walls here, Hera might need to back up from this position. He's going to get this Treb for sure. He's going to get it. Oh, it, <laughs> it survived, but he'll get it on the next one. Okay, there goes the Treb. Another castle in the south here from Hera. And they're both like, is this gold infected or something? <laughs> they just, they don't want to touch it, dude. They don't get want to go anywhere near that gold. But I think Hera's really concerned now that he's going to lose castles as the Mongols. So he he doesn't want to place a castle in a position that Viper can trap it down. If Hera, Hera really, his unit here is the Mangadag. And he's going to try now. And Viper needs to repair every cannon he can. And Hera might even oh, overcommit nice at dodge. times to try and take out these cannons. The dodges, the micro dodges from Hera, like right before the cannonballs land. He's making that decision when the cannonball is at its peak in midair mm -hmm, yep. to move his units away. So really, really good stuff. The raids are big, though, from Hera. And Viper right now is still open at the front. He doesn't really have anything to defend this. He's going to have to make some pikemen. The castle will clear it up, but that's a distraction he doesn't need. He needs to be fully focused on the front side. Viper's pretty much out of gold right now. Like Hera, if he just holds this, he wins this game. And raiding on the other side is awesome. Hera has no shortage of stone or gold. He could actually click Elite Mangadai. Viper only has one Bombard Cannon. He's got one trip, but that won't last. I think Hera is going to be able to grind Viper down here. Viper cannot push these castles. Yep. And we have to question the decision-making, right? Why go north? Why not go to the Golden South? Why not even scout the Golden South? Yep, yep, for sure. Seems weird. You get some. You get access to gold as Bohemians. So you can get into a very strong composition. Can it counter the Mangadai? Maybe not, but if you get some good shots, it can. Bohemians have a lot of tools late game, right? And Hera opened up on a map we'd seen him banned so frequently. And he went aggressive from the start, followed up with scouts, which we haven't seen. And he snipes two more cannons here. And I think this game is all but over at this point. Hera has full gold control. Viper has zero gold income with Bohemians. And if Mongols are on Hussar and Elite Mangadide, there's not many civilizations that can stop it. But certainly not a civilization without gold. There's just no way. Viper now selling all his resources for gold he's taking this skirmisher and he's gonna try and hold absolutely he's going to try and hold but Hera using the uh the shallows in the middle just keeps sending light cav in and that means that viper needs to keep a significant portion of his army at home if he ever pulls it away Hera's gonna be in with hussar and now Hera is just expanding his farming eco he's just gonna spam hussar in front of the mangadai get some trebs behind and Viper is going to be using resources he doesn't have to just defend. Yeah, and there's there's just no way Viper can take gold conveniently here. I mean, he does have two relics, but two relics compared to one relic and 41 on gold, there's a pretty big difference there. <laughs> and I think Hera just needs to use the other side. I mean, honestly, he doesn't need to do a lot else except snipe Bombard Cannons mm -hmm. for Viper to call it, but if he really wants to go for the killer blow, he could just continue to raid on the right side, have a couple Mangadai there, make sure Viper can never take that gold as well. Oh, Bombard Cannon get it taken out by the Insult the worst, to injury. <laughs> the worst feeling when you have zero on gold, right? Viper <laughs> is extending now to the, the gold in the south. So he's going to send some villagers, I presume? <laughs> I think he should send some out there to take that. Yep. Hera doesn't have an outpost there, but I think Hera is actually just... He's so confident now that he thinks he can push down Viper's castle. And Viper's going full pike, full skirm here. And it's another crucial Bombard Cannon moment for Viper. Will he be able to keep these cannons and trebs alive, or will it just be sniped by the Mangadai? The Mangadai are going down, but Hera has one, two, three, four, five castles to produce them from. Yep. And Hera, he's got 11 in the queue and two trebs in the queue, but he's running low on gold again. Still, it's just, he's got so much gold income. It's so easy for the Mangadai to snipe the siege. So Hera lost a treb, he snipes another cannon, he'll snipe the next treb, and Viper's going to lose this position. Still has no control on the other side. Here's the desperation move. Viper does have stone, so he's going to try it, but he's, he loses another bomber cannon. Like, even if he gets 30 on gold right now, he still has no momentum in this game. 
And look at this. He's just getting that final armor upgrade for the pikeman. Doesn't even have enough for Halb right now. Yep. He's still banking stone in a very viper way, right? To have 1,200 stone in the bank. Although he probably needs another castle maybe to defend himself in the north because the push is coming from Hera. Yep. And he needs a castle in the south. And he's going to try, right? And, and Hera's having a panic moment. Hera's like, oh crap, he's over here. The Viper's Pikeman kind of reminded him that this spot's important. But, I, I mean, even if Hera just loops the Hussars and Mangadai over to Viper's main base, Viper has no way to stop that. So I just don't think Viper getting gold now really accomplishes a ton for him. Unless he has epic defense and offense at the same time. He has been selling food this entire time for a pretty good price. So that's the only thing keeping him alive at the moment. Yep. The castle's going to be denied from Hera. So it is a doubt castle there from Hera. He won't care too much about that. It's a little bit inconvenient. The problem for Viper is all his production buildings he made forward in the north, right? Yep. Being taken out by Hera. He's going to have to replace all of those. And then he's going to have to somehow continue to gain, to have access to this gold when Hera shifts the pressure. Mm -hmm. Hera's pretty close to pop cap right now. He's got a crazy boom as well with 148 eco in total. So he can only have 50 army at a time. But it is like the strongest 50 army he could have with Hussars Mangadai. I guess no Siege Onager. Shout out to the Siege Onager and Siege Rams that Hera could be considering. I'd be considering Siege Ram personally. Viper suddenly with 35 on gold. Hera can't and it's let fast. him sit down here for too long. Yeah. Yeah, Viper. Is I... a demo coming out from Viper? <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. <laughs> Every well, every little know. bit helps here. I mean, honestly, if Viper yeah. if Viper could get four or five cannons at home to snipe Hera's trebs and then continue to push with the cannons on the gold side, I mean, maybe there is a chance. Look at, look at how fast this gold came in. He suddenly has a thousand gold in the bank. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. Imagine if he would have just had ten villagers here earlier in the game with a earlier, town center. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have been crazy. Nothing. Era. Oh, he, he, Viper didn't see the trebs were there. He could have taken out well, two he trebs. He's gonna lose two cannons. He has demos coming on in the north. The oh, I see that. Set up on the water, but they're only demo rafts. So less damage, less splash area. I, I don't know how much damage demo rafts do to trebs, to be honest. I'm going to assume not that, that it's not enough to take out the trebs. One out, yeah. I think. Yeah, that, on the I'll other side in that moment Viper. there, Hera had two trebs stacked, and Viper did have two cannons. But he didn't hit the trebs right away, and he was going for the castle. And what happened was Hera killed both those cannons, so... Here go the demo rafts for you. I, I'd be surprised if they even Mangadai get in close. Are gonna, yeah, Mang and I are going to snipe them down. Yeah. And so Viper's lost his castle. Viper has the same population as Hera, but he's got 30% of the map right now. And Hera's done a stellar job at holding on this other side, because if he would have lost it completely, Viper could actually focus on his main base. It's actually wild that Viper is at 190 population. I I agree. And it's, you know, it just, How? you think back to the start, right? Like, that was why we have Viper as our favorite today. Is oh, because. These trebs are stacked up, Tristan. That's going to be, that's going to be, Trebs, on Treb top kills. Of each other. Both of them, oh. bye bye. But, Dave, as good as Viper has been with comebacks, I do not see how you can ever let this position slip if you're Against Mongols Mangadai. and if you're Hera. Yeah. It, you know, the Mangadai and the Hussar combination. And then the Siege, Hera's now gone for Drill and Siege Ram. I mean, it should ha have won this game already, and I think it will. Uh, Hera's going to add those speedy Siege Rams on the right side now, and that should finish Viper off, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's an epic start to the series here because we know it shows the difference between the two players. If Viper yep. can get to late game, he's insane. But if Hera can do damage early, there's very few players that are able to stop him. And I mean, Viper calls it not GG. a bad late game player himself, right? Absolutely. <laughs> He's well known for that. Viper losing the first game of the series. We've seen this a lot, though. Like, he needs to warm up in series. He did win the first game yesterday, uh, and people were already calling it after he won the first one. Like, Viper wins the first one. It's over, right? Yep, yep. He never does that. Uh, but Hera with a great performance here, and like, going into the scouts there caught Viper so off guard. He lost four villagers. Because he was paying attention to the water, he never expected land aggression at home. It's, yep. That's just how rare it is. He never expected it. Hera went for it, added the fish. Viper did snipe those down, but Hera, YOLO, or not YOLOing, but immediately going on to four TCs, mm -hmm. got his economy so far ahead, Viper could never catch up. And, and I'm, I'm really curious to see what the game two response is here for the Viper here, because mm -hmm. uh, we saw, in game number one, we saw the exact same Hera that we saw in the quarters and the semis. I don't think we just saw the same Viper 
that we saw in the quarters and the semis. Will Viper no. be able to turn it around? Will his home map and his civilization choice allow him to rebound here and tie up this final 1-1? This can snowball on you quick. And these guys are so close that if you're not on point for one or two games, that can be all the difference. Um, you know, we then could, of course, talk about the civs and like Bohemian choice, I, though I think that Bohemians actually can be insane on this map. We saw Viper's gold count rise up. He had no gold for so long, and then suddenly 25 villagers on gold brought him 2k. So I think that that's what Viper's plan initially was, was to abuse that mining bonus and just control that gold. But good stuff from Hera. I will move on to game number two. And here we are, game number two. Let's see if Viper can turn it around. He's gone for the Lithuanians, Dave, and I think that could probably be a big part of uh, why he went for this map, is just having that sieve. Mm -hmm. And you look at the matchup against Persians, right? Lithuanians should be favored against Persians. Persians can be strong in a hybrid map like Cross. You know, you get the extra resources early. Um, your docks have more HP, which can really help when you're mm -hmm. contesting the pawns. Your TC's docks produce faster, which can also help. But the tech tree for Lithuanians and the options that they have, I think, a little bit better than Persians. The only thing the Persians have that Lithuanians don't is Camel. But That's Lithuanians true. Lithuanians will likely be going into Monks anyway. So Camel doesn't feel the greatest against Monks and against Knights with the plus attack from the Relics. They yep. actually do quite well against Camels. So. Yeah, the Persians are a civilization that were picked a lot more in the past on this map. Feels like all their bonuses should make them a top tier pick. You have more HP on your docks, which is incredible. More HP on your TCs, so you can't be all in push. Knights that do extra bonus damage versus archers, and then knights and camels. So, like, not to mention their their eco works a bit faster in Feudal Age and beyond. So, I, I'm surprised we haven't seen Persians a little bit more, but I think it's just because of the Japanese, the Byzantines, and the Lithuanians existing that they've always been almost in that fourth place spot. Um, small thing here for Viper, though, with this build order, he went for an early lumber camp, so you don't really have time to scout your base. And of all the wood lines that Viper Everybody has here... The TC. Oh, no, he doesn't seize the bamboo. Okay. Yeah, Come yeah, on. yeah. Go that ahead. would have been huge. But, like, of all the wood lines that Viper could have lumber, lumber camped, he went mm -hmm. for the tiniest little nugget of wood here. That will actually have an effect on him later on. Well, like, if, if you think about it with Lithuanians, you don't see that much at the beginning, right? Yeah, And yeah. you have to send your villagers right away. Yep. So that's probably what he did. He yep. just saw the very first one, sent his vills. I mean, or it could be just... A super viper play right i'll take this little nugget because it's it's annoying me early and i'll save the big ones for two hours into the game <laughs> <laughs> no i i maybe but i i think that might be giving yeah, him too much credit i think that's a chatter <laughs> yeah 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 i think that was definitely uh this lumber camp was definitely associated with a little bit of an eye roll from viper after he realized yeah. how tiny the wood line is but you know the positive for him is he still got the fishing ship lead you always do with this build order and as Viper actually gets a loom, because he forgot a house here, not the biggest deal, he had showed up, saw exactly where Hera docked, Dave, and now mm -hmm. it's a talking point of what is the strat for Viper. Uh, a common thing with the Lithuanians, because they're so fast to feudal age, is normally to send a villager. And from Viper's perspective, he already took a path with the scout. I could easily see him just running over there, and there's not really much Hera can do about it. Yeah. Imagine Hera goes for, like, a douche. Ooh. Imagine. That would be that it would can be crazy. Be, it can be good. It can be very strong on this map. Yeah. It can be very, very strong on this map. And we've seen, I think like Yuppe has done it here. I Ruben think he Stock did it against too. Fire. Ruben Stock. Stock. Yeah. I had it happen to me, dude, against Ruben Stock. <laughs> I saw he was Persians and I said, oh no. And he just said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but check this out. Hera. Now he can probably figure this out based on what he hasn't seen. But he scouted Viper's Pond, but he didn't see the dock. So that has led to him going to the no, north side. No, but he scouted the full north. Yeah, he yeah. can figure this out. Yeah, he so knows exactly he where should have is. an idea. And he's actually the one sending a villager. Oh, but Viper, Viper scouts the vill. Oh, and Viper noticed that for sure, didn't he? 100%. Yeah, and he's just going to track it from a distance. I don't know if Hera, Hera probably saw the scout. I, I, I'm not sure. Hera's bringing his scout over. But mm -hmm. Hera is not tracking the fact that Viper's going forward here. So big moments. Hera is fishing far away from his original dock just so he could see if Viper places a dock. But if Viper's able to actually deny Hera's dock while getting fire ships on Hera's pond, this could be a quick game. I think the problem for Viper here is going to be if that Persian dock goes up, it's there for the next 20 years. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. so hard yeah. to take them out, right? Right? Like, what, 3,800 HP or something ridiculous like that? Oh, man, this it's is so wild. interesting. Viper just had full coverage... 
So he's just getting the timing wrong here. He thinks that Hera's villager is going to be with Hera's scout. Mm -hmm. And Hera must know. also know. So Hera's sneaking now. Viper is expecting the villager to be on the far side. He needs to double back here. Hera can get the dock down. Oh, and Viper's dockville is checking now. Yep. Big moment. Will he see and this Hera villager? Hera can't see that dock. Hera can't see that dock. And Viper can't see the bill. Viper can see he the bill now. Oh, man. And Hera's going to have to, like, chop a tree to place the dock while being attacked by a villager. Yep. Where is the scout from Hera? It's running away from the scout from Viper. It's very low HP. Hera now needs to just try and save this villa, maybe try and get it to the, the pond in the south or something like that. Just get him home. Worst, worst possible thing that could have happened to Hera here, though. You don't get yep. your dock up. Your scout is now weak, and Viper's already making fire galleys on you. And Hera's whole strat was originally designed around making fire galleys offensively, so... He, yep. he hasn't actually seen Viper's Dock, Dave. He's fishing near it, but he doesn't know. Yeah, he's one tile off. He's also going for a barracks here. So I think Hera's adapting maybe a little bit. Yeah. And he already went out to gold to make some potential fire galleys on the pond from Viper. So I'm wondering if he builds an archer range here. Can't really get away with a stable, especially once you're fish. You're going to be harassed, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the food going to come from? Is going to lose that villager in the middle, too. Dream start for Viper here. Hera does have a dock in the south, so he's going to start fishing there. But Viper's already working away yep. on the fishing ships in his pond, so Hera's in trouble. Yeah, this is, I mean, Viper a little fortunate or maybe very Viper-esque to find the villager in the middle. Knew exactly what mm -hmm. to do. Love the initial strategy from Hera, but not realizing that Viper was on his pond is a tricky thing here. Viper actually got baited, though. He hasn't killed a fishing ship yet. Like, he's still not killing fishing ships and finally he, he goes will have two fire galleys now though yep that's true Hera needs to double dock this i think if he wants to save this pond the viper has actually just canceled his original plan oh, when he sent viper sent the scout over to try and harass that villager that's going to repair the fire galley too dave look it's at her really annoying with it i know there's a million things right now look at Hera's point of view he just saw a range was going up for viper and that it was deleted so I think mm. Hera's a little confused now, and Viper's going to go for scouts instead of going for a range follow-up. He does have a decent food eco. Still has the fishing ships alive, mm -hmm. right? And... Hera's well, not repairing Hera's his ship. Lose, yeah, Hera's going to lose the fire galley. He is blocking with the fishing ships, and he does have a fire galley out now. So Viper will need to reinforce. He's already got a third one on the way, and it looks like he's going to take out this fire galley... And then he can take out the second one, yep. and then he can finish off the fishing ships. And he's also going for a dock in the south. This is the type of Viper that we wanted to see. Um, the type of opening, mm -hmm. anyway, from him. And Hera is going to need to make something in the south here. Some sort of fire galley or galley or something to contest. Because Viper is going to take out fish if he doesn't. Yeah, 6 and 0 KD, by the way. 6 and 0. The perfect response from Viper. A little fortunate there. He actually had a 1 HP fire that he's now saving. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Hera doesn't have a ton of food compared to Viper. In theory, he shouldn't have a ton of food compared to Viper. Uh, and again, the big thing is you're investing into fires to save a pond that yeah. you should have had and in the first look place. At, look at the scout in the south. Viper's like, I knew you had a dock here. Yep. He sends a scout immediately down here. He's going to take out that uh, villager. And Hera's still making a fishing ship from that. Yeah, Hera doesn't know. Exploring the dock. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh God, this is terrible." <laughs> By the way, ten and OKD, ten and O. <laughs> Viper hasn't lost a unit yet, which is pretty crazy because that scout was pretty weak early on. Uh, Hera might end up killing Viper's villager in the south here on the dock, though, because he does know there's something there. Also, love how Hera's scouting the north to see if Viper is in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the scouts from Viper looking for more kills, and he's patient and runs away. And again, it's really hard to take out Persian docks, but the goal was just to kill the fish at this stage of the game. Viper has done a good job at that. Yeah. Hera needs a the counter. Only thing, the only thing Hera or Viper needs to be careful here is if he cuts production right now and then tries to go to Castle Age, I feel like Hera can all in. Yeah, on land agreed, agreed. Yeah. Maybe do some damage. So Viper just needs to keep queuing up scouts, queuing up archers. Your eco is looking so good right now with these fishing ships. Mm-hmm. And you've already taken over another pawn and probably a pawn in the south pretty soon. I think you can just keep massing military and make your way up anyway. You hey, don't need to stall the production. Viper, such a pleb, lost his first unit. 12 and 1. He will clear up yeah. more from Hera in the south. And as you said, Dave, he's he's producing a lot of scouts. 
He's also going to mix in spearmen with archers. So Hera's going to need scout numbers and upgrades. And when have we heard that before from Hera? As he goes for the second stable. I mean, everything that could have gone wrong for Hera in this game has happened. Yeah. Such a great job from him to give himself a chance in this game. Yeah, Viper needs to get some walls down. He's doing it right now. Viper knows he has this thing where, like, in the middle of the game, it's so hard to settle yourself down and think, like, how could I possibly lose in yep. this position? And Viper does that so well, right? So he's thinking to himself, how could I possibly lose? Well, he could go all in, and I could try and get greedy and go up to the next stage. Mm -hmm. If I get my walls down, then I can just simply wall behind the aggression, and I can go up to Castle Age safely. And once I get to Knights, he's dead. Yep. Hera, with a good job, Hera's going to break through here, though. Viper had so much work to do. Hera is distracted, however, and oh my god, Very the Spearman! Distracted. The Spearman getting some nice hits there as Viper's at Hera's base, and this is why Hera was distracted. He's had to drop a tower on the berries, which is actually the correct play. He needs something mm -hmm. to stop that. Mm -hmm. But again, tricky stuff as we still have water engagements. Viper killed more fishing ships there. He will lose his navy, but he's killed a decent amount of fishing ships from Hera. God, Hera's so good at, like, he lost all his fish, right? He lost the only pond he was on. And then he's being contested in the south. And he still manages to get farms down at the same time. Goes for that second stable. Gets the upgrade and still has army on the field. And Viper has to be worried about him. And also After fishing winning, in the north too. Like, he won like four battles in a row. And Viper still needs to be a little bit concerned. Yeah. About what Hera has coming his way. It's been a, a very similar theme to what we saw in game one. Where Viper mm -hmm. had... I think there were more question marks over the initial strat, right? But, like, Viper fell apart, and then somehow that game went on as long as it did, right? And Viper was pushing castles. Like, how on earth did Viper get there? Well, how on earth is Hera still alive in this game? And uh, Viper... Viper's up. He's up, and this is the perfect response from him. Hera still has scouts, but Viper's going to be almost completely walled. And he if Viper can the make... pond in the south. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And his dock is still, like, Persian docks, man. It's still alive. Yeah. On the pond to the right. Like, it's not even at half HP. <laughs> also, if Viper doesn't transition into farms a bit better here, I could see this being really bad for him. And also, one hole in his wall could end the game because Hera's still producing scouts. Hera has armor, which Viper does not. Hera's got bloodlines, and Viper does not. And then we also are going to have forging. So just full all-in scout production here from Hera. He's going to stay in Feudal Age a while. And scouts are going to be very strong here for the time being. Especially with the upgrades, Viper doesn't have any. And those Spearmen are looking quite slow. The scouts are now coming back across. If there is a hole here, Tristan. It's bad. It's super bad it's for Viper. It's really bad. I think he patched the one hole with the Sable. And I don't think there is one. Like, I would be chasing Hera's army with my own army right now. Because yeah. I'd be worried that he would break in. But a Viper must have checked everything here. And yeah, it seems like Hera can't break through. Viper is transitioning into the farms. And Viper's on Hera's golden, and Hera still isn't clicked up. Like, Hera's still all-in feudal because he knows he's behind. It's a good move, and maybe even a better move because he's Persians, and the TC works a bit faster right now, but... Oh, God, Viper scouts are through to the gold. Oh, jeez. They're weak, though. The scouts are weak, so they died to the TC. He has to run away from that. Still kills one villager. Does get the second one, but he's going to get his entire army cleared up. However, he is now in Castle Age. He has the ability to go for knights. Hera... Clears the entire army. Yeah. But Viper goes for a second TC, and he started the night production, which feudal units struggle so hard to clear up. And I, this is definitely where I think Viper, uh, he expected this game to go after the initial damage, <laughs> right? And a lot of players worry after losing their army, but he's making knights. He's, he's dropping up. the second TC. Hera's still somehow alive, but there's still a hole there that Hera didn't plug earlier. And now it's a trap. No, the yeah. knights will leave. Never mind. But, um... Hera's click up. has done a crazy job. Does he not have a building here? Or? Hera, click up. He's got it. He, he oh, he does. Have, I, mean, Hera. I think he he he's, might have. It might have been a situation where he thought he's clicked up already. Yeah, he's busy. I mean, he's freaking yeah. out right now, right? And there he yeah. goes. Now and he clicks up. He's up. I can't believe he's still in this position. Great job from Hera. Obviously, Viper is doing the right things. He's doing what he needs to do, right? Got the walls down on time. Yep. Hera couldn't do damage with the scouts. Couldn't be punished in the transition. Going into knights. He'll probably add some monks to grab the relics and adding additional TCs. But Hera's making this so much harder for Viper than it probably should have been. Right? Agreed. Yeah. You know, I think something that's unique here is uh, Hera having the extra scouts against the Lithuanians has a lot of value. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, even now, you could have a couple of your weak scouts on some relics if you've scouted them. The Viper's the Viper moving out with upgrades. monks to try and get those relics, and that's going to be his attack upgrades, Dave. It's just simply get, like, gathering the relics. These these scouts and spearmen can kill this army. He's yeah. got no upgrades. Yeah, Viper needs to get upgrades. Anyway. But Viper's, the reason he's taking the fight is because he knows a lot of these are weak, and he doesn't want them to ever become light cap for Hera. So he's going to trade them down, knowing he's on TCs, and that's actually good micro from Viper. Yep. And considering the, the no upgrades, that's a huge clear up. Hera keeps two scouts alive. He's like, I need these. <laughs> I need these. <laughs> As he's producing more, he's like, I can always yeah. make a few more here. I need these. Yeah. Doesn't... Viper running out of fish on the left, so that's a concern. That's six fishing ships, but look at his farm eco. He's added behind this. Perfect transition from him. You know, he still has fish on the right. He still has fish on the left, but he's going to go into more consistent food mm -hmm. economy. Look at Hera. His base as he brings the relic away, and Hera's going to snipe two monks. Uh, Wait, what? Huh? Conversion? Don't, don't let him. Huh? Conversion? How is that not a conversion, bro? This should be even harder for Viper once Lightcav comes in. I mean, Viper's only got five army right now. Hera's doing everything he can. He's going to go double monastery. And we've seen it before where Hera can go for enough army with monks to convert the defender's army, and he could be okay. Yep. I think every time I've seen Hera win like that on cross, so, and we've seen it a couple times, full production, his opponent didn't have walls. He was playing way too confident. Yeah, that's true. And they and didn't Viper have 36 have on food with speedy pikemen. And that's going to be exactly. the, the exact choice here for Viper is pikemen. And the barracks is like perfectly timed here from Viper because the camels are coming out already from Hera. He's gone for double monastery with Persians, which is just like, okay. Yeah, I don't think they get sanctity. <laughs> he, they, they get a, their, their monk texture is pretty dog. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. The Viper, he also has this trend recently where he doesn't get pikemen until way later than I would. Like, he opts mm -hmm. for the numbers first. So let's see if he actually clicks pikemen in time, because if he's just it's fighting with spearmen. It's not even an expensive upgrade. Yeah, it's not even expensive. I don't, yeah. I don't understand it. It's it's weird. I mean, spears, siege from Hera. spears could still be good, but... Spears die tonight so much harder, and mm -hmm. Viper only one relic right now. He's got a massive lead. This definitely falls into the category of a win Viper should get. Harris should know that, so the, the pressure is honestly off on you. You're already up 1-0. You're feeling good about that. You know you're behind. Just send like, everything you've got. I think it Pikeman necessary. There you go. He gets Pikeman, and then once you see the Siege Workshop, if you see a Manganel, do you go for Redemption here from Viper? Honestly, the I one think... problem for Viper's base is like his stones are very out of position. Yeah, so true. if he wants a castle uh, defense somewhere, he's going to have to take this hill. I think he's far enough he's ahead where he can just go five barrack oh, pikemen. Oh, it's denied. The siege workshop denied at 99.95%. There goes the momentum from Hera, but Hera's in with Lightcap in the back of Viper's base. Yeah, Hera trying his best. I mean, super unlucky not to complete the workshop. He's going to have to come forward and finish that now, but he's finding villager kills and it. There's definitely still that theme that if Hera is aggressive enough, Viper, as good as he is defensively, can find it hard to react at times. But I just staring at Hera's economy and the fact that it's just one TC, and then at Viper's economy and all the pikemen that he's going to be able to produce, and I just don't know if Persian monks and camels can do it. The light calf doing their best though, and again, like Viper not really killing the light calf there. Very interesting. Persian, uh, Hera's looking in his monastery right now, like, where are the texts? <laughs> they're, they're not here. <laughs> I can't seem to locate them. <laughs> yeah. The Viper, he's, he's going to commit with the knights here, I guess, and just take the fight. Normally in this this type of push, if you just kill the first wave of monks, you can end up winning the game. Mm -hmm. So he's just, he feels like he's far enough ahead where he could justify even donating a couple knights because he has pikemen. He's killing the monks. They'll take a decent fight. Dead. He still will lose yeah. the fight. But he should be in a good enough spot because Hera won't snowball off of this. And Hera went for a ram opening. Yeah, Hera's still making some knights of his own here. Bro, like, how is that Persian dock still alive in the south? It's such a headache yeah. to fight against this Civ when it's on water. And and that's why Hera wanted to get the dock up on Viper's side, right? That was the mm -hmm. whole strat. Viper spotted it. I think it would have been a different game if Hera would have also spotted the fact that Viper was on his side. But he, he had the right idea. He did the trick that players will do where they will fish near it, but he didn't take the shore fish. He was just a tile off from seeing Viper's dock, and so he got surprised. Viper, 41 on food. Hera, well, 
He's got 25 farms, and he's still got the fishing ships yep. in the north. So his Fudiko is looking okay, but against a wall of pikemen, there's not too much that a Castle Age all-in from the Persians can do. Absolutely. And, you know, Hera, he knows this is looking bad. He's got to force through fights like he can. I mean, he, he can't really tech switch either. Trying to do that would be, be too difficult for his economy. Yeah, so. from Viper, here it comes. Yep. Hello, monks. Yeah, and that, that one like have could kill three monks, actually. <laughs> yep. It should kill... Oh, the pathing, oh, unfortunately. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Viper, who hasn't been on stone, Dave, could start to take stone now for a forward castle to really finish off this game. Hera still producing some monks, still producing some knights and like have. And he's probably it's, like, it's to... how am I not dead yet? You know, he's just waiting for exactly. Viper to finish him off. It's gotten to the point where Viper can almost just spam Castle Age units. He goes for more stables. Like, he's going out to stone now, and there's even more stables. He could just go Pikeman Light Cav yeah. and kill Hera, right? Like, and raid with the Light Cav behind, and Hera is just going to have so many problems, too many fires to put out. And there's, if there's no push from Hera happening, it essentially means that he doesn't have a chance in the game. Absolutely. Because Viper's Eco is so far ahead. 53 on food now for Viper. And I, I think this is a good moment for Viper, you know. Uh, just like it was for Hera in the first game. Uh, obviously, Hera was under a little bit more pressure to finish off Viper there, but I think Viper will have the sense that he could just ease his way to game number three. Forget it. He's forgotten about game number one already, I'm sure. And it also just feel, it feels great as the Lithuanians. Picking off this many monks and then slowly moving out, getting your relics, yep. spamming the pikemen. I think it feels great when you're against the Persians and you see they have two monasteries because you know something's gone horribly wrong. Absolutely. For them. And... Harris says GG and Viper says egg. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a what's going on? There? That's a Norwegian. That's a Norwegian, that's a Norwegian character. character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Viper. Wow. I mean, you got some drama. Viper calling Hera an egg. Holy crap! I thought these guys had respect for each other. Yeah. No um, respect. Yeah. No respect. But I mean, we we kind of already summed it up. Uh, Viper is just initial understanding of what the threat would be against Persians here mm -hmm. and his denial of that while simultaneously starting the ball rolling on his first initial attack was perfect. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, like we saw a lot of instances and have seen a lot of instances with Hera where he loses the initial exchange on the pawns and that all in scout play works, right? Yep. And he just he, whether he couldn't break into Viper's base or anytime he tried to Viper was was counterattacking him and having confidence instead of reacting yep. all the time. It was a good job from Viper to get the initial lead and then capitalize on it. It's just like the timings were so good from Viper, right? Yep. When he showed up with his dock, Hera was trying to place the dock down. He denied it. When Hera uh, lost and then transitioned into land army, Viper was there. He was walling up his base. And then he made the pikeman switch at the perfect time when Hera tried to go for an all-in. And then another transition at the end here went into light cab as Hera started massing the monks. And there's nothing Hera can do. Mm -hmm. He's just a wall of units he's fighting against. Viper has a much better eco, and Viper wins that one. That's what we'd love to see. That tells us we're going to have a good series here because Hera is playing at a very high level, and Viper seems to have um, shook off, shook, shaken, shaken, shooken off. The shaketh? We don't know. Egg. The, he, he hath the shaketh egg. offeth. He has shaketh offeth. The, the rusteth. rusteth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, I, I agree with you there. I mean, there was just, there's so many things that happen on the map. It's actually really hard as a viewer to realize how much multitasking is needed. Uh, whereas it might be a bit easier to pick up on that on a different map. So he definitely has, has shaken off the rust. I think that's the way to say it. Um, and we will see Hera now have his choice of maps. Uh, we are catching up to live time because these guys have no delay and they're ready to start apparently. But the one thing I saw as we're zooming through is that Viper uh, stole some sheep from Hera. So he went forward. Uh, you yep. see this frequently with the Mayans, Aztecs, Incas. And that eagle, since it can't really be fought off by the scout, got what he wanted, a few extra sheep. Also has a bigger line of sight, right? Am I wrong? I think it does have one tile they, bigger line of sight. I, I think it, it... I know they, they changed can, there's it. An easy, there's they an do. easy way they to do. figure this out. They do, yeah. yes. <laughs> but it used to be... They did, it used to be the same as like a Mongol scout, right? Yeah, it, it used did. to be like close. plus two tiles of vision over a normal scout, and now it's just plus one. Yep. And that's why I was confused initially, because I remembered that they used to have even more vision there. So, there's a guy who thought a camel scout lost to. Oh my God, that's a that's a pretty early barracks there from Viper. Okay, so he's going for the pre mill drush here. Mm -hmm. 
He's not going for that uh, fast up timing with Mayans where they go into men at arms archers that we've seen more commonly anyway. Yep. Dude, Viper, drush. Viper had a horrible map against Tato for the Mayans, right? Because yes, you need the gold. Awful. And he yep. still almost won that game. So, I, I mean, I just have so much faith in him when he plays with the Civ. But I'm pumped because Hera's done some ridiculous things with the Khmer. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, he's going to miss the Militia. Oh my god, no, he just that... missed the Militia. Wait, he didn't see that? He didn't, he didn't see, see it the by a tile. Oh my. I, I just assumed, I wasn't even on his point of view. I assumed he saw it. Oh boy, that's going to be rough for Hera. Now he is Khmer, so he can't hide in the houses. However, his houses aren't positioned in the perfect places, right? Like, mm -hmm. you see Viper playing with Khmer? He'll put a house right beside the lumber camp and make a little small wall. Yep. He won't make the houses as part of a bigger wall um, because he wants to be cute <laughs> with hopping in and out of them. And Viper might find some damage here on the mill from Hera. Yeah, and Hera kind of continuing to scout to the north. I, I think this is a misplay from him. If you see the five tile stone, you have to know your opponent is close. And maybe he expected that he would have seen something. But, I mean, Viper is going to show up. Hera's got plenty of time here, though. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Viper, unfortunate pathing around the side there. Probably should have come in on the left instead. Hera only then has half a second to adjust. But yep. he's going to get a house down near his uh, wood line. And he'll get the small walls. And Viper will be harassing a little bit. Preventing Hera from moving out, maybe. But Hera will be able to get up to Feudal Age with limited damage. And just go right into the stable. I wonder, like, you have to be careful where you attack the houses here against the Khmer. Because they can hop in their house and out of it and wall you in. Um, I think... If the shoe was on the other foot, we'd see Viper do that. <laughs> I'm not sure if Hera's going to go for those traps, but yeah, Viper's militia just wanted to buy himself time. Hera's scout now shows up, uh, and I think that Viper's going to be fairly happy with this. You're not always expecting to get damage done. You're just expecting to delay your opponent, and I'm sure he expected Hera to be going scouts, but it's going to be tough for Hera being down two sheep. One thing that's good with Khmer in this Civ matchup is usually players, if they go scouts against Khmer, they can struggle. Right, because they don't have the barracks yep. before the uh, the stable. Mines don't have access to scouts, so Viper doesn't even have that tool, and Hera won't be worried about. Oh, I don't have a barracks to make spearmen. Absolutely. So it's it's like uh, just a weight off your mind. <laughs> Although Mayans are still pretty good, they have a lot of counters against Khmer. So we'll see how Viper chooses to play this. Looks like it's going to be fairly defensively as he goes for the walls to the TC. Yeah, Viper's going to need two spearmen. You would normally see a range. Hera's got some timing here. He's gone up really fast. He's got two scouts already. And Viper hasn't gone for any small walls on the left. He's really determined to get full walls down. Mm -hmm. But I'm surprised, right? Like, a couple small walls for Viper is very common. Why would he not drop a palisade? Oh, okay. All right. He's just going to do it Because there. he's yeah. waiting till the last second. Yeah. <laughs> but why, though? Like, <laughs> he's better. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> I mean, just act. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, he does small wall the golds he will small wall this other wood line ahead of time and he is adding the spearman now yeah, he also got is... in with the militia is he gonna kill a vill no this is the annoying thing about Khmer. is he was already hitting one just hops in the house right yep 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 and now the he militia is taking just the fight against the away. scout but his eagle gets the eagle gets killed yeah by harris scout so viper no longer with that Ooh. eagle did force a little bit of idle time with the militia as Hera is trying to get some picks now Viper goes into a range and just kind of continues to slowly extend his walls outward. Yeah, Hera took. Hera will be disappointed that he didn't get that much value out of these uh, these scouts. But what he doesn't know is Hera's got. He's forced a lot of idle time. Viper's got three villagers stuck on his woodland on the left, Dave. They're just stuck because he forced those houses down. And then Viper also hasn't sent the idle back to work on the other woodline. That's been standing there. So uh, that's helpful. But I think you're looking for a little bit more than idle time. When you're yeah. up against the Mayans on Arabia. And you're just wondering in the Khmer player's shoes, like, how do I pressure this? Yeah. You know, like, I have to add an archer range so I can shoot the villagers that are walling behind um, and maybe get my scouts inside. Mm -hmm. But Viper has only a few tiles left to wall, and he's got spearmen set up here, and the range is just now coming up. So I don't know if Hera's going to hit that timing. He's going to try and get in, though. He's got six scouts, and he's desperate for damage here, but he's... He also doesn't want to get trapped in there. We oftentimes see Hera just mm -hmm. control the map with scouts, have seven scouts with three skirms, and then suddenly dives on the main army from Viper. So yep. 
I think that's what Hera's shooting for. I actually would be very surprised if Hera takes any engagements until he has skirms come out across the field. I, th I think Viper should be sending one eagle to the center here just to take a look mm, at what's coming. Maybe. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised if he shifts one over there. He only he actually only made one more eagle. He had another in the queue, but I think he canceled it. So yeah. he's playing a little bit greedy. We've never said that about Viper before. And here's the thing. like People might be asking which civilization is better. I think it's clearly the Mayans. But when you have Khmer under the or in the hands of Hera, he's got such an approach with them with the aggression that he can beat anybody, and it's just a comfort pick for him. So that's why he picked it so high. That's why he's choosing to go for the civilization. But he still hasn't been able to break Viper. And the longer he goes without doing damage to the Mayans, the longer the game starts to go, and the more questions start to be asked about the Khmer. That's how calmly Viper has got this wall set up, one building at a time, right? Yep. Just keep making military. One spearman here, one archer there, one I can't eagle do it. over there, and then just a slow wall off. And it's not even palisades, it's houses. Yeah. So it's super hard to break in feudal age. I just, I, I can't relate, as I you know said earlier. And Hera's trying his best to break down this house. Viper's going to get fletching now. All Viper's going to try and do is, in this position, he's going to try and weaken those scouts. And his long-term plan is to have eagles. But he's, he's overforged. He quick walls two more houses. Oh, my goodness. Yep, and Hera's heading out to gold now. I think Hera's going out to gold a little bit too late. You look at that food coming in. Yeah, yeah. As he's housed now, he's just producing too much but at you, the moment. You see what's crazy about this play with Khmer because their farms work so quickly. Mm -hmm. Hera could click up the Castle Age faster than Viper, and he's made more army. Yep. So he could still turn this into Light Cav and Skirms, and you know, Viper, it almost feels like he's going to have to take some type of an engagement against Hera before Hera gets those upgrades. And Hera... He's even getting upgrades of his own right now with forging. Because Feudal Age Eagles aren't that strong, especially against the Scouts. And then the Skirmishers are enough to... And there's like there's the no potential for a counterattack. Like yep. There's no risk yep. of Viper deleting a wall and sending archers over. Because it's just too much army. Yep. And these are the only units he has in defense. He needs to keep those scouts honest. He needs to keep them away from his own walls. Forging is even coming in now from Viper and the infantry armor. Ooh. So this shows how seriously he's taking this threat from Hera. And Hera's in a position where he can click up soon. Yep. Hera is controlling this game right now. I think Hera should act like, and this is what he's doing. He should act like he wants to take a fight, but he should just never take a fight until he's in Castle Age at this point. Because if he doesn't allow Viper time to get his upgrades and Hera's able to get Light Cav a lead skirm, Light Cav a lead skirm would dominate. And it's Viper who wants to move out. So he's made this very clear here and Hera's just going to back away. And I like it. Use your skirms to focus down any spearmen you see mm -hmm. or any archers. The eagles aren't really that strong for Viper. Well, it infantry armor and attack. Oh, don't so go that way though. Actually quite strong against the skirms. It's just the scouts that they have to be worried about, yep. right? But Hera's going to be surprised with the amount of damage he isn't doing against those and now viper is making his way out here never thought we'd see viper being aggressive before castle age but he didn't under commit to the defense and therefore he has a decent feudal age army as hair is just a minute and 15 seconds away from castle age viper needs to take a good fight or get back to his base absolutely before Hera gets there but this is interesting because i could have i would have stayed in my base if i were viper and then Hera would have his way with me and he would push out and in Castle Age, he would dominate. But Viper really trying to take the fights to Hera before upgrades could come in. I just I just don't know if it's worth it here. Hera is going to still clear this up, I think. Uh... Yeah, he's doing some good damage against the Eagles. Eagles trying to take out the Skirmishers, but Hera is just ignoring them, and he's hunting down those archers. Viper has managed to clear up a bunch of scouts, but look at the army mass from Hera. Still insane. So got 12 military on the field. Viper down to six. He's up to the Castle Age. He has walls, but... Hera's going to have a lot of tools once he re reaches Castle himself. He's got a two-minute advantage. The positive here, though, I know that looks bad. The one positive for Viper is that Hera won't have 12 Light Calf. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like, it's going to take time for Hera to mass up Knights. Uh, Viper, you need to make another house here behind this house, though. You don't want this to be an he'll issue. He'll figure it out. Yeah. There it is. Remember, Hera's all in here. Like, look back at his eco. It's fairly obvious. If he ever has an army at his base, oh, even boy. though he can hop in houses, he's going to have some problems. Yeah, that, that food is not coming in as fast as, he, as it once did, dude. Mm -mm. He's only got seven on farms now. Oh, boy. Yeah, eco is, is definitely was designed in feudal to mass army and then kill in fast and castle age. And Viper hasn't had to sell the stone. Viper's got 
good eco upgrades. And Viper's just holding, and Viper hasn't taken any damage here, Dave. And so I, I, it, it's crazy to me like, that fight he just took was calculated. Like he knew yeah. that he had to take some type of engagement, otherwise it'd be so much worse right now. I'm just, I'm amazed that Hera's eco is as bad as it is right now. Mm. But I guess he's just fully focused on production. He wants to kill the Mayans early. Feels like he can get into Viper's base, but looking at it from above, it seems like Viper is fairly comfortable. And is Viper going to like leave with these crossbows and go for a counterattack? He is. He absolutely is. No, here's the thing. Hera's tried to go double army cop. He hasn't been able to afford Bodkin Arrow on those skirms yet. He hasn't been able to afford plus two armor on the Knights. He's had to catch up on those numbers. So I'm still not a fan of if Viper lets Hera walk in through this house. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a house there from Viper to, to not give Hera free damage, but the counter attack's going to be brutal here. Viper, though, what are you doing, oh, dude? Don't, Why are you letting are you this guy doing in? Letting him in? Why are you letting him in here? Oh my god. He will have Bodkin, and Hera might be hesitant to stay here, but Viper loses two villagers. Hera's got to oh, be thinking, though, where are those crossbows? Exactly. Alarm bells have to be ringing in his head. Like, where did those go? Yep. They were defending for so long. Where on earth did those crossbows go? Viper's going to find a path right into the wood line, Tristan. Hera sees it right away. Well played from Hera, but there's still a massive problem with these crossbows because they get through that palisade wall early, and now Hera's got flags on every single house <laughs> as he tries to hide his eco, and he's forced to bring back um his army from the front viper now has plenty of time to build up yeah just just watch the idle eco time for Hera. there's a big issue for him like Hera's farms will expire if he doesn't have wood right so he's gonna drop a tc on the front kind of like that but viper he's gonna be no disappointed he hasn't killed no villagers armor. but he'll be happy with the fact that Hera isn't pressuring him anymore watch these knights just fold no armor at oh all. none at all none not even yeah, one not armor even the upgrade. First, uh, armor upgrade. No, and Viper's got a choke point to sit here. The knights can't garrison the houses. Harris just deleting all his houses. The knights won't do it. The knights won't do it. There's no armor. And the and the Vils won't have one house to hop into now. <laughs> the skirms are gonna be here though. But I think it's just losing that many knights that's the painful thing is Viper still hasn't killed a villager. But now he's, he's moving forward with right more army. Too. Yeah. Yep. Houses everywhere for Hera, so he can save the villagers, and he's done a fantastic job. He didn't lose a single villager there. Yeah, it's so impressive. Tristan. So that that's amazing, but Viper now stretching out for the stone on the hill, and he knows how risky this is. He's sending a lot of vills forward mm -hmm. for that. Hera's going to counterattack. Viper is, is being sneaky. Now, honestly, if Viper would see the whole map right now, I think he would realize being sneaky is bad for him. Like, he should just run right into that gold. If he were to do that, Hera might have to come home again, and then his TC might not be vulnerable at home. So here he comes, and he is going to find Hera's Hera. gold. And, oh, this is a brutal spot for Hera right now. Yeah. And now he has to send the army back again. This is the worst feeling, right? You send it forward, and that, then it has to just come back. Yep. <laughs> like, you get to the halfway point on the map. It's like, oh, here we go again. And, and now Viper is building up with a better economy, despite losing more villagers. Hera also being hit on the wood line. Great reaction time from him to hop inside the houses. But this is very much a sweet spot here for the Viper. This is precisely where he will want to find himself. And Hera, his style of aggression here with the Khmer, wasn't able to do the damage he has found against every other player so far in this tournament. Yep. I think maybe a little bit of a misread early in Castle Age, right? He let his eco go to shambles, and he was just trying to outproduce Viper mm -hmm. and get through the walls. But Viper was perfectly content to defend behind house walls. And Hera just couldn't get through. Hera going for the TC in the north. Crossbows are coming, but the TC should be up in time. Yeah, that's that interesting moment there. Hera even deleting some of his farm foundations because he didn't want Viper to take them. But yeah. again, it's an issue for Hera. He cannot contest crossbows. He, he just cannot the fight. Armor. There it is. Yeah. Finally. And Viper's even going to go Eagle Warrior because he feels like Hera uh, will just be on the skirmishers. So those eight skirmishers that have been running around the map, they will be more vulnerable too. A Viper. I think Khmer, Khmer are kind of a trap that you fall into as well, where you're not going for walls because you're like, I have the houses. Absolutely. But Absolutely. your eco is so wide open, you're constantly bringing your army back to deal with all of this. Yeah, it's so it's just so tricky. Having spoken to Hera about it before, he just said it's a style thing. It's a comfort pick. Mm -hmm. That aggression suits me, and that's why I do it. Uh, we'll see if he can clear this up. Viper he lost a lot of crossbows here, and the knights now do have armor, so it feels he's, like Viper... He's got 22. Yeah. So if he loses these 10, he has another 12 behind. That's and look, they're on the wood line. Hera does react, though. So Hera reacts to give himself a chance here. 
He still is even. And Dave, look at Harris' economy. He's at 37 on food. How? Yep. How is he at 37 on food all of a sudden? Crazy defense. Great stuff from Hera. Viper almost has enough for a castle. And if we know Viper, this castle will be relatively safe just to let him expand a little bit further outward. Look at the KD for a second. 61 to 29. Viper has not taken the engagements that he would have wanted. He has gone forward to Hera's base multiple times and just hasn't found the reward with the villager kills. I think now you have to stop going for the raiding armies if you're Viper, and you just got to build up one big ball that can contest and, as you said, maybe make a defensive castle too, but I could even see a forward castle happening if he feels like that he's the army for it. Oh, that's a very un-Viper-like castle right there, and you mentioned it, and it happens. Viper's sending a lot of villagers forward for this, 14 villagers forward, and he's got the only reason he's going for this is because he's got the army at the back yep. that Hera has to respond to. So he's going for this castle. That's give, gonna give him a fantastic position. It controls the top and it controls the middle of the map, basically, because of the way these wood lines are set up. I would have even liked to have seen it more aggressive, to more no, to the north Viper. or yeah. more <laughs> towards the other stone here, but he just doesn't want Hera to see it because he, he respects Hera and knows that Hera has just thwarted every single attack so far. Mm -hmm. But oh god, like even if you ever get the army that can chase down the crossbows, it, Viper would just fall right back to the castle spot and you're in big trouble. Yep. yep. And you can already see like the follow-up castles coming from Viper too. There's that whole stretch of hill yeah. at the front. Oh god, that's perfect range of the wood line as well. Hera's probably like, oh jeez. So Hera needs good fights from here on out, Dave. He is getting plus two armor. He's healing up his knights. Viper... Still willing to send small groups of crossbows. They don't consider 15 to be the biggest ball. Mm -hmm. So he's looking for vil picks without ballistics yet. So he will miss some of these shots. Or he won't because or Hera hasn't... Not. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, God. It's just so tough to be in Hera's position right now. I think Hera's the only one that could bring himself back when Viper has this much control. Yep. And Hera should clear up this crossbow. I mean, he's got plus two. The Knights, he's been healing them up. Some of them are weak. Viper will get some value, but uh, should lose this force over here. However, the Eagles are looping. Look at this. All the way around, and the crossbows are at the front, finding some kills. The Eagle in the north is finding some kills. Hera is just putting up fires everywhere, Tristan. Yep. Extremely difficult for Viper to micro there as he's trying to split forces, though. But Hera has lost 11 vils. Viper's got to be careful. He's losing his crossbows now. He's losing Eagles underneath the TC. The other eagles will maybe find some picks, but the thing that I've noticed about Viper is he doesn't have the craziest farm count behind this. So I don't think Imp is going to be coming in anytime soon. And Hera, if you spot that TC with your scout, you yep. need to start attacking a villager there. That Oh, that would be such Viper a good find. More bills. Viper sending more vills. He's like, where's that army dude? Yeah. Like, wide open over here. We got to get this down. Stat. Look at, like, honestly, look at the production buildings from Viper versus the military numbers. Like, yep. and the, look at the wood count right now. He doesn't have, he's been so aggressive. He hasn't really had the economy. And Hera's economy is, is actually looking a bit stronger, at least in terms of the food income. Viper yeah, trying Viper's, to go Eagles now. He's gone for that fifth TC. And I think that TC is more just securing the gold because uh, he's yeah, running out yeah, of gold yeah. at home. Like this gold is wildly inefficient at home. He's got 26 vills on one tile. Yeah, true. That'll be, that'll actually be good for Viper to find because he could maybe place farms there. So, I mean, Crossbow Eagle versus the Knight Skirm. Knight Skirm mm -hmm. is easier to get to as Viper loses another plume. He's trying to send army into Hera's base, and Hera's waiting for it. Oh, forward castle from Hera. I love this, dude. Put him under pressure. I, I'm not sure I like it with six bills, though, Dave. No, you you, you got to said, you gotta said like 20 behind. bills. Yep. And Ballistic's in for Viper, too. So he could just jump in and snipe this. But Viper's actually going for it. He sees the Knights in the middle. And he's going to go for another raid on the right side for like the fourth time this game. Yeah, he's really... That seems to be a, a stylistic approach that Viper has maybe changed in his approach coming into this. This is just not something Viper normally does. And he raids, don't get me wrong, but he's just running forward, even when a castle's going up on his face. Yep. Holy cow. I mean, I like it from Hera, plus two as well. Zone, delete the lumber camp. Yeah, and he goes for a castle of his own. Just don't let this army in. Do not let this army in before your castle is up. Viper's got eagles and crossbows waiting behind his TC just in case. He's got 30 on gold. He's dropping more barracks now. Still not close to Imp. 
Hera's got so many knights. Hera's going to clear up another crossbow army. Viper cannot get his groups together here to take proper fights. Yeah, he's not as centered as he might like to be. There's a lot of things happening. Maybe not fully focused on that raiding army. He will kill a knight. Kill two knights in that. Nope. Only one. Also losing some monks to plumes. Monks. Yeah. And and like the eagles and the plumes can run underneath the Viper's castle at, in, at any point in time. But Hera will clean the plumes as well now. There's a big target for Hera. It's right beneath that castle. I'd like to see a siege push from him on that TC. Make it even more awkward for Viper as he finds more vil kills at Viper's base. Hera's got full upgrades here. Hera, he's still behind in villagers, but his army value's been insane. And Viper doesn't have over 10 of any type of unit right now. What is happening? He is producing at a four, five barracks now from his eagles. So he's finally got his production up. But a lot of those farms are being ranged by the castle, right? And Hera's yep. going to keep coming in with the knights against Viper's eco. He's going to try and pick away at these crossbows inside. There's no raiding force from Viper whatsoever. It's a great pushback from Hera. And he's keeping his economy at home safe through aggression. And if Hera can get another castle up near the stone, just another forward castle right now. Viper's not doing any damage on him. Hera's going to click up. He Hera's could win up. this. Oh my goodness. It really felt like this was the type of game that Viper would have wanted. He hasn't yeah. been able to get it together. He's had the army, but the army's never been in a mass. He's been trickling it in. And as we see a very desperate TC for Viper on the right side, Viper's not anywhere near Imp. And this is the exact Hera, uh, the, the exact position, excuse me, that Hera wants to find himself in. Yeah, Hera goes for a castle in the north too. He's probably going to make some more farms up there. And you know Hera won't really be all that vulnerable to raids because he loves putting the castles in the middle of his farming eco, right? Yep. So he's going to lock that down pretty early. Viper will only have a few minutes to really do damage here before Hera's an imp. And before he gets his food eco really rolling. It wouldn't surprise me to see him going from like 27 farms now to we look at it in two minutes and he's got like 50. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think both players, because it's, it's kind of slowing down at the moment, but... Dave, normally what happens is Khmer, they go Cavalier, and then mm -hmm. the opponent goes Halb, and then you don't really have an easy counter to that. As Viper drops, it's like 7th TC in this game. Yeah. Two Viper's not TC. anywhere near Imp. Hera will be able to open Cavalier and Trebs, and unless Hera takes significant losses soon to his army or his eco, I don't see a way back for Viper here. I really don't. Viper even losing plumes, losing eagles. He's sending more eagles on the side. I mean, it was obvious that he just wanted to pick away at Hera's eco. Yeah. But he just lost too much military doing it. And he let Hera get that castle down. Like, why are you not trying to stop the castle mm -hmm. forward? You see it. At least give it a shot. Take a look. See what military is around. And it is interesting because uh, what we know about Viper's style and how calm he tends to play. It feels like the aggression from Hera really has, has made him second guess himself at times. And tr maybe try and be too aggressive. But then again, Viper's going to finally find some eco damage on the right side. Hera didn't have a castle there. Hera's at 53 on food. What did I say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's wild, bro. It's Viper wild. needs to stop producing bills right now. Stop producing yeah. bills. Buy and sell resources everywhere you can. Try and click up to Imp. And, you know, try and hold on here as he's clicked the Pikeman upgrade. He might honestly be forced to stay in Castle Age on Pikeman. Mayans all in Castle Age is not what you want to see. No, though. not exactly. Like, I feel like Khmer can do that much better with Knights. Mayans, not so much, right? Your Eagles are going to be really weak against Cavalier. Your pikemen are going to be really weak. Yeah. And Your crossbows haven't done anything this game. And if Hera just continues, he needs to back that Treb up. That's unfortunate for him. Yeah, good yeah. job from Hera to realize that. If he just starts to pick away at these TCs, I mean, Viper is just wide open. Look at this castle for Viper in the back. He's, <laughs> he's bracing himself here. He knows this is yeah. going to be brutal. Oh, my word. Viper's probably thinking, this is why I don't go for forward casts. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't try it. Well, you know, this we... why I make them defensive. The thing is, that castle killed three villagers, right? If you're going to yeah. go forward castle, it's got to be in someone's face. It's got to really do damage. And so I felt like at that moment, he could have been more aggressive with it. And like you said, maybe it's a style oh, thing man. as Hera runs in. Hera's going to have Cavalier soon. Viper doesn't have an army to defend this eco. Nothing. Uh -uh. He's still two minutes away from him. Also, Hera uh, could get a castle denied on the right side. This is kind of important. It feels like Hera will eventually complete that. It's just plumes. And the wolf is actually going to get a kill here. Yeah, Hera also finding some kills against Viper in the south. And also against Viper in the west. Hera getting some raids in 
Our Viper getting raids in against Hera in the north. Sorry, but Hera's ready to clear that. And it's just been so much gold sunk into Eagles and Archers this game. And Viper's just not going to be remaining with any of that army. What a recovery from Hera. After that initial raid, actually not letting Viper get any kills with that initial crossbow raid. Yeah, was that was insane. sick. That was sick. Right? I was... Like I was thinking that the game was still over then, too, and he somehow just found mm -hmm. every single army that Viper had sent forward. Viper is still higher population. I, which is insane. Yeah. and, Burp, and I don't know. <laughs> like, <how>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, like, stuck he's... in the corner. I guess on the bright side for him, I mean, he's got 2k gold. He could yeah. still go Halb. He's got one relic. And, oh, man, Hera not knowing about this TC. I thought he knew about it. But oh. he's just going to find out now that Viper's been on that gold this entire time. That's a painful find, but obviously you've got to do something about it right now. And by the way, folks, Viper will make it to Imp. He chose the TC in the corner to go Imp. He was that worried all the other ones could go down. And we're still not finished. But crazy comeback in the same game from both players as we see the Halb upgrade on the way. And Hera Absolutely. doesn't have many skirms right now to deal with that. Hera ran into that TC. He's going to place a castle there. Try and take control of that gold. Viper is actually going to lose the Blacksmith going for the final ar armor upgrade. So he'll Ooh. need to make another one. Yeah. You might, might not, not realize, realize that. that initially. Yeah. Uh, should we be surprised that Hera didn't treb down the castle from Viper in the middle? Mm, I don't think that's really that much of a threat right now, right? Okay. I think it... Focus on the push. Now you can send a treb back mm -hmm. to maybe deal with it. But priority is taking away the eco from Viper, and he's done a very good job with that. Viper's going for elite eco right now. Viper has a like an eighth of the map. Elite Eagle in that forward barracks, though, so... <laughs> yeah. See if that completes. This is why you uh, want to forward pressure your opponent, guys, is just so you take out their buildings before they get researches. I love how, like, if we were watching a low Elo Legends game, right, and someone had 1,800 gold at the beginning of Imperial Age, we'd be like, use your resources with Viper. It's <laughs> just like, well, that's classic Viper. <laughs> He's under so much pressure. He, you know, his opponent is everywhere yeah. uh, fighting him, and he's still got, like, 1,800 gold in the bank, just because. Well, you Saving know, it for later. this is another one of those points in the game where you look at Kamur and you say, ooh, what do they do? You do get hand cannons with Kamur, if I'm not mistaken. So you could do the that against Eagles. Down. But yeah, Hera's going to lose hand cannons both of his trebs, and Hera just making skirms right now against Halb. I don't think he was expecting the eagles from Viper. You don't get hand cannons with Kamur. I thought they did. No. Okay, well, I think maybe they used to. I know they used to have bomber cannon, and then they lost that. But El Dorado, bro. El Dorado. Ugh. Hera's got to be thinking, what more can I do to kill this guy? Yep. Where is he? What is he doing? Is he just in this corner? And yeah, he's That's just That's exactly in this where corner. he is. Yeah, and he could actually get three relics as well. You might be able to snipe this trap. If he snipes the trap, it will really delay Hera. Eagles, are they able to get it? There's a couple more incoming. Good blocks there from Hera. Great and the blocks. Treb stays alive. The Eagles are looping around the other side. Hera, he's got all of his army focused on just four Eagles because he wants to keep that trap alive. Yeah. He'll get another one set up there. However, Viper's got two trebs of his own. And this, does this kind of remind you that Sebastian versus Viper game in a way, although Sebastian was the player playing Mayans, I believe. Yeah, he was, he was. Remember. But Viper was stuck in the corner, right? He was stuck in the corner the whole time. He was biding his time. And then he eventually pushed back and he always had gold to spend, somehow. It, somehow, yeah, but but there is a world where he runs out of that pretty quickly. I, I'm, I'm not seeing where he has the gold, but it can't be much left. And I think when you run out of gold mining, even with relics as Mayans, you're not going to be able to make many eagles. Mm -hmm. But so Viper's got a... He's actually on some type of a timer here, I feel, because Bro, of Hera's defensive army, castles everywhere. And Hera's just going to take the fight. Do you really want to take this fight, Hera? I know you've got Hussar. Destroyed. Oh, this is going to be so bad for Hera. And Viper's still got yeah. traps to push. Look at the military count now. They were both at 60. Viper's what? at 61 now. Hera's at 17. And Hera's going to lose all these skirms. Hera's got a lot of stables here. He's only got 37 on food now. And Viper has El Dorado. And he's got the ability to send these eagles in like two or three at a time to the farming eagle from Hera, which is spread all over the map. Hera goes for another defensive castle. I, I can't believe this. I thought it was over. This is like a repeat of what we said with Viper against Jordan and Tato in, this, in the quarters and semis. As Hera's desperate, he'll lose a Treb. And what has this game been? I mean, two players, both players at various points coming back from the dead, it feels like. But Dave, 
What do you make as Khmer? What do you on earth do you make you, besides you Cavalier? Just have to make Hussar. Ha Hussar, Cavalier, Hussar. Skirms. Yeah, that's just it. Feels you have no so other option. I mean, rough. you could go Ballista Elephant. They do get Hand Cannon. Wow. Okay. You were right. So Hand Cannon's. <laughs> hey, don't say wow, you were right. <laughs> Don't be surprised. I don't think I've ever made hand cannon as yeah. I You have Scorps, you have Bliss Elephants. I, well, I want a meme. I listen, don't wanna... listen. With a thousand gold, then Hera absolutely should have been making them. So that earlier, right? Like he's had the gold, yeah. and it's been full infantry that he's been up against. But it's not a situation he's maybe found himself very frequently. And Viper's going to start to grind down these castles, and the castles have really been what's saving Hera from being raided to death. Hera's, yeah, I guess you're seeing him making him now. He's making some hand cannons. Uh, he, Viper needs to protect his trebs. And it feels and like he's, he's got enough eagles to protect his yeah, trebs here. Yeah, yeah. But, well, uh, protect them long enough for that castle to go down anyway. Yeah. And then the eco is wide open again for the eagles to run in. And this is just wild. Viper is out of gold right now. He's yeah. still got three relics. But it feels like he's got enough eagles on the field. And... He can just head in soon for the raids. He's he's grabbing that relic in the north of Hera's base. Like, thank you very much. I will take this. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Also, look at he converted a cavalier and he sent only the cavalier to that gold in the north for Hera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wouldn't blame Hera if he doesn't react to that at all. He's so distracted because of the push. The real issue for Hera is Viper's kind of been wide open in that corner. I don't want to say wide open, but he hasn't been able to focus on any type of counter raids. And he yep. is expanding his eco. If you look to the right corner, Hera's still in this game. He's still massing the hand cannons. He's still, like, he's got a lot of castles to protect his eco. And I don't think this game is over yet. I think Hera's going to nope. finally start to raid. And Viper has to use his trebs to take out those castles before he can do any significant damage to Hera. Someone was asking me about the late game difference between Viper and Hera yesterday. And it's interesting to think about, right? Like, ultra late game. Viper will bank gold. He will keep his really important units safe and he'll just play super patiently. Yeah. Every move he makes is is very calculated. Hera's late game is just gonna be speed. Yeah, it's expand, like, expand farm, spam hussars. That, that's the game. Everywhere. Yeah. He's just throwing units at the problem, and it's so difficult to keep up because he's so he's so talented when it gets to that stage. Vipers is more of like a strategical approach. Yeah. I think than Hera's. Yeah, I mean, Hera's, Hera's still going to have castles after this. He, and it's really tough for Viper now to justify taking engagements in every location because the hand cannon mass. And Hera has a treb, and he's thinking, I'm going to treb down this castle. But, mm -hmm. you know, Viper's got to play catch up here, and he's got to think about his skirms now. So we could see the uh, rare unique tech. I think it's very strong with the Mayans. Holche. The Holche upgrade. And those skirms are unbelievable. But I'm not sure, Viper, Ooh. do you really want to engage here with all your eagles against this treb? Viper got uh, Viper got a good trade rate on the food, and he's gonna take out the hand cannons with oh. his eagles. Is that worth it if though? If you ever get if you ever get close, if you ever get close to the hand cannons, they're very squishy. You can take them out. And you have Eldorado eagles. He did lose fifteen eagles. I think I think I think he went in there to take the treb, and I think he was distracted there. That's my guess, because that that is perfect for Hera. 21 kills on those hand cannons. He has no eagles Most anymore. Eagles, Hera's yeah. got 71 on food. Hera's making more Hussars. I, I'd like to see Hera mix in skirms to where he can. And Viper still hasn't taken out some of these castles back here. Advantage Hera right now. Yep. And Viper's buying stone with gold that he really doesn't have. He's got four relics, sure. But uh, the ability to spam eagles no longer there. And here come the skirmishers from Viper. So that... He went for these archer ranges forward. Holche, how expensive is it? We don't. No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how expensive it is. <laughs> I um, I mean, it's something Viper will consider later on. Viper's going to use his own trebs against Hera's treb. Hera decides. All right, fine. You're going to have that castle for now. I'm sending hussars back to your eco. And if we're talking about a trash war, Kabur with their farms, absolutely ridiculous, right? Yep. Hussar farms. Viper's going to have to lock it down. He has found the stone in the south, which is really great for him. And there's still a gold available over to the right side. There's also that relic sitting there, and it would not surprise me at all for Viper to be waiting with that monk on the hill just to snag that relic. But I don't even know where it is. Can you tell me again? The relic is in the front of Hera's base near the stables where the fight is happening right now. Okay. Still can't see it. I see a monk there. The monk must Behind see it. Behind the stable. Behind the, the stable. Oh, yeah. I see it now. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Harold went in for a Hussar raid. 
And Viper had enough halves oh there to, to defend from it. And Viper... Feast. Good time for handcart. Uh, one hour into this game uh, with four relics, and yeah, there does look like there's a monk going for that relic because we have a pause. And if I were a betting man, I'd say Hera is trying to whew, deep what breath game, moment bro. here, um, trying to regroup. Have, he didn't have handcart, so Ezeko is actually going to get better here, significantly better. Yes. Um, with that, I'd also like to see both players get crop rotation because there's a chance this goes super this late. Goes the distance. Yeah. Let's see if Hera snipes that monk. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he shot the monk there. So, you know, one Civ has Hussar and can raid like crazy. Uh, you know, the other Civ does not. But the other civilization has great skirms and great halves. Hera, similar situation to Viper earlier. In fact, it's even worse for him when it comes to his gold units, the hand cannons, is that he's just yep. not going to be able to make any more of them. He can't, he can't go near the skirms. Yep. He can't go near the skirms, yep. because if he does, Viper will just sacrifice his entire skirm army to kill like 10 of those. Yep. And I think it's a good trade. In the south, Viper took that gold or the stone away from Hera, and he's got stone now to make a castle. Mm -hmm. He's getting Holche right now, which is very rare for us to see. He's making that castle. He's going to go for Trebs, and he'll take the remaining gold on the map. That's Oh, this is a big gold. engagement. Sorry to interrupt you here, Dave, but Hera tried to take the two Trebs, didn't get any hits, and he lost a couple hand cannons. So moments like that is, is what Viper will want to see more of. I'm surprised there's actually that big four-tile stone there. The Viper's got some halves next to it. Like, that could be really important for both players to take. Yeah, I think he'll he'll move there after he clears up this gold. I think and Hera... Viper's still selling food for a really decent price. Hera yeah. should be selling food right now. I really... Enough. Like, uh, there's a rule in, in post-imp, and I'm not going to pretend that I'm, I'm a better post-imp player than Hera, but there is a pretty basic rule, and it is if you're pop-capped, you take engagements. And Hera, it feels like a good opportunity. I know he hasn't found a lot of damage, but if he were to just raid with his Hussars, there is damage to be found out there when Viper doesn't have many castles in his main eco. So I, I would like Viper to see Hera. Can't... He's got 60 Hussars in queue, dude. Just go with mm -hmm. a wave of Hussars. Go try and find some kills. You're going to have more Hussars here in a moment. Look at Viper just ignoring the Hussar with his skirmishers. He's just going after these hand cannons. Yep, yep. Takes out a couple of them. They're throwing two javelins. Every skirmisher is. Hera is sending the Hussars over towards that trap for Viper near the castle. Viper is waiting for those Hussars. He's like, huh, where are you guys going? Are you mm -hmm. coming over here? As Hera sends a trap of his own. And Viper will position the Halbs. Try to kill the Hussar. And just bad positioning. Yeah, Viper. bad positioning. But, uh, you know, simultaneously pushing forward here. And Viper does have another monk somewhere on the field. Uh, we'll see if that monk comes forward to get these relics, but Hera's going to try Treb defense like Viper did earlier, just in an attempt here to keep his castle up. And I think you, you might even want to consider backing away here if you're Viper. We'll see. He's happy to kill the hand cannons for now, I'm sure. It'll make his halves that much stronger. But you are diving Messy in awfully times. close here. Messy times for Hera. I mean, the halb raid in the north killed 12 villagers, right? Under Ooh. the TC. Yep. He's not paying attention, but he does have... 136. Viper is on 99. That's okay with mines. You just have to be careful. Yeah, you have to be very careful, especially when you've got exposed villagers in some areas. The wood line in the middle there for Viper is 20 vils. And Hera just hasn't gone there. And I'm, you know, Viper, I mean, again, with these traps. Oh, actually, no, he's really close to taking out the castle. That's why he stayed here. Oh, Hera, you've got to pick that off. It could take he's two more hits. Up. He's leaving. Oh, Bye -bye. Good, good hold there from Hera, Dave. And Hera's population is still good. And Hera losing. 20 or so villagers doesn't actually hurt that much because he's got he's 70 on food still. Castle. He's going to lose the other castle. And if Viper gets control over that gold... Yeah, true. I mean, 800 gold doesn't sound like a lot, but at this stage of the game, it's a few more eagles, a few more trebs. I wonder how Viper, desperate Viper right? is to save this castle. He is desperate. He's going to buy stone, Dave, because Hera saved four trebs in order to push this position from Viper. And behind it was a lot of Viper's farming eco, also Viper's relics. Oh my goodness, what a game. Honestly, Dave, I know it's early, but it feels like whoever wins this game wins the series. I could be wrong, but the level's just so close here and so high. Mm -hmm. This is going to matter so much to both of them. Viper wants to save this castle, but how? How do you save it? Uh, I think you no. don't. You do not save the castle. He has taken out the other castle. He has taken out the other castle from Hera, and he's full on that gold now. And so maybe some more eagles being mixed in here. But if you take soon. the trebs, Dave, you might even take the trade here. If you take yeah. all four of Hera's trebs and Hera doesn't back away, this is amazing. Viper needs and to group up the halves against the too. trebs. 
Para, save your traps. Take all the hand cannons. And oh. Para says, GG, well played. What a comeback from Viper. Oh my god. What a ridiculous what game. Oh man, I mean, if there, was, if there was any question after the first game on if we were going to see the Viper that we saw in the quarters and the semis, that question has been answered. And yeah. I mean, an unbelievable game from Hera. I thought he was dead in early Castle Age. On some levels, I feel like, you know, we did see the weakness of his Civ choice later on, but like, Viper had a corner of the map, a corner, <laughs> mm -hmm. and somehow was able to somehow get the resources that he did and claw his way back into the game. He had 22,000 gold, Hera with 54,000 food, a ridiculous game of Arabia right there. I think you just, you just saw the stylistic um, difference between these two late game, yeah. right? Like Viper biding his time. Right, just slow push. He will. He's willing to give up ground to then push back later once he has all his upgrades. Hera, maybe a byproduct of his sieve, but definitely part of his style where he just expands outward. He gets a ridiculous amount of farms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely ridiculous. His macro is insane. His speed is insane. His production is insane. But it, it clashes with the style of Viper. And Viper, for instance, taking control of that stone in the south. Yep. Then getting a castle, taking out the castle in the south from Hera. Every time Hera pulls units away to deal with that stuff, Viper pushes forward. So really, really great approach there from Viper, and what a comeback. Yeah, well, what a comeback. And and there's a few people saying that's an early GG. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think Hera knew he's going to lose all of his trebs. The thing that I was about to jump to when the GG was called was Hera losing a bunch of villagers in the south. He doesn't have military. He doesn't have relics. He has one hand cannon. There's no way that he could realistically stop the superior skirmishers and the halves and Viper with the five relics. Uh, and, you know, it's it's hard to question a lot of decisions from either player there in that game. It felt like there were so many pros and cons. Just a beautiful Arabia game in our final. And a big momentum swing for Viper, certainly. But, I mean, how many times have we seen Hera go down and then just climb right back? Even if he's down 3-1. In that, in that game. The, yeah. uh, I'm not even talking about this set, but in but, that game, Hera was behind. When Viper got to Castle H and Hera didn't really have an eco, and he came back with that forward castle play. Amazing. Yeah, just Ooh. crazy. So we're in on, on Nomad. We're just catching up to live time here. And it looks like Viper is going to have a TC on this bottom area. And Hera's going to have a TC on the top. It is landlocked, but barely at the top there. Yeah, it's Very true. interesting generation. Yeah, and I think, you know, that the generation might suit Viper in some small ways. Again, the dominating conversation is always Spanish wanting to keep their fish alive, and then go fast castle into conquistadors. And so being closer on land can be better for Spanish in some ways because the castle drop could have more of an effect. They seem to be pretty far. And then also being further away from the Malians on water is what you'd want to have in an ideal scenario. And Hera is relatively close to Viper, though we do not know if Viper is going to find that dock. Viper already found the dock. Oh, did he? Oh, well, there you go. It it's Viper. <laughs> of course, he <laughs> but, but like, found the dock, dude. <laughs> I mean, uh, stroke, of, stroke of luck there, right? We can't give it's him tons wild, of credit bro. for that. Obviously, you got to scout yeah. the shoreline. It is kind of nice, though, when you find the dock that early because normally you'd spend whatever sheep you have scouting the shore. Mm -hmm. And so now that he knows where the dock location will be, he'll just scout his map. And whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Yeah. mean, it's not quite the same as the game yesterday where you had like five sheep and we went to Tato's point of view, you know, third of the map explored we went to viper's point of view 90 percent of the map <laughs> was under his vision but uh still it's a good opening for him he knows exactly where Hera is and he's probably going to pressure on water early with malians mm -hmm. it's Absolutely. just a tendency that the civ has right however we did see um Hera plays spanish against leary and what he did with spanish was defended his water he didn't yolo into Fast Castle, mm -hmm. Conquistadors. He actually contested water uh, for a very long time. So Viper might not be able to hit that timing on taking out the fish. Yeah, and I, I like that from Hera. And the other thing that impressed me so much from Hera in his Nomad game, because both players actually won with Spanish on Nomad, which is funny in the semifinals, um, is Hera's transitions with the economy. I mean, we talk about it so frequently, but he just he's happy to switch into some farms faster than other people do. And he actually found a lot of boars as well. I think he mm -hmm. had like four or five boars, which allowed him to get to Castle Age as quickly as he did without the fish. So when I look at Harris' map right now, he's got a boar, two boars to the left, and then one more toward the north that he's just he scouted. He sees the one in the north. That's the only one he sees currently. Yeah. So he's going to send a villager out here. He's going to go for a house. 
and uh, look for some more boars. And this is just nomad experience, right? You always send a villa out at some point. Yep. Um, as your house villager and bring in boars, it looks like Viper's done the same thing. He's bringing another one. Let's see how many boars Viper can see right now. He can see one to the south. He will be very unlucky not to find one to the left. He's just missing it'll, that. It'll walk in. It'll walk in. Or his sheep will walk into it. Yeah. There we go. So he's got two to take. He can hit a really good timing here. Really, really good timing. All right. So, um, I, and I don't know how many people saw this. I, you know, this was going way back in group stage. But there's really interesting parallels for Viper where he mm -hmm. had lost to Barls in his round against Barls two weeks in. He made four fires after he already knew where the dock was for Barls. By the time he had killed the fish, he was then starting to add the archers. The archers were maybe a minute or two too late. Go ahead, Dave. Harris bringing in two boars at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't understand, but he's doing it. Uh, Here we go. All, all the new Xbox players in my chat are like, I would lose my entire economy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Anyways, um, so, so Viper... The first round lost to Barls because he made too much on water when he was already going to dominate the fish. And then in the second round, he played against Sato, or it might have even been another player. I apologize, but that doesn't matter. Viper just made two fires, Dave, and then he switched into a Barracks and Archers. So I feel like mm -hmm. with Viper seeing this right now, he should know I'm going to take out his fish. This is a, 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 a given. Like, it's just going to happen, and I want to see Viper try and switch it up on the land, possibly. I think Viper should open galleys here for sure. Just two galleys? Fire, yeah, two galleys. Uh, even three or four could be good. And then you add the fires in afterwards. After you two galleys are, are out, I think you analyze the timing when mm. Hera hits Feudal Age, and then you adjust from there. Okay. If he's in Feudal Age not too long after you, as Hera <laughs> proceeds to wall in the villager from Viper, and there's no shorefish there. So <laughs> Viper's going to have to use the ships to help himself break out. Um, If Hera's up like close to your timing i think you add some fires in front okay yeah but if he's not you just keep going into galleys or just keep looking for the fish and Vi viper goes for additional fish okay viper doesn't have a loom so harris should absolutely delete that palisade wall and kill vipersville but harris expecting viper to have loom there he's of course planning on what else he needs to do he's gone to gold it does feel like hera wants to go defend his fish here again but I don't know if his timings are right here. It almost looks like Viper's trying to block the dock. Did you see that with the fishing ship? Yep. That's pretty interesting. I was wondering why he moved it over there. Yeah. I was thinking, like, is that fishing ship trying to net the villager or something? Hera goes for a dock in the middle. Interesting. But so it's Viper super might late. Not... I know, but he What's might the not thing? go to that middle area. He's yeah, going to get true. it up in time for Feudal Age. Right? Yeah, that's... Five seconds? Yeah, he's Spanish. Right, so yeah. he should complete it pretty fast. Yeah, Hera needs to run with his fish then, and we'll see how what direction Viper chases here. I'm surprised Hera hasn't actually left with the fish already. Viper's been in Feudal Age for some time. You don't want Viper to track where your second dock is here if you're Hera, and yeah, Hera just hasn't left with the fish at all. I think he had the right idea, come back on the water, mm -hmm. but a bit weird to me that he's just going to let his fishing ships go down here. And Hera opens galley, although he uncues a few of them that were behind that. Viper brings in another boar, is already on berries, has six fishing ships, and Hera has not tried to save any of his. So I guess Hera's just going to try his best to kill Viper's fish, but I feel like Viper having fires to back this up could actually mean that he defends his own fish here. He sends a galley back. He sends a galley back to the dock as he chases that fishing ship to the left. Mm -hmm. And Hera only... Well, he's going for more fishing ships in the middle, so he's... Counting on the fact that Viper will assume this is his only dog. Ah. I think that's a bad assumption because I think Viper will check that middle area. It, like, he will know what Hera did in that set against Leary. Remember, Hera went for the dock in the center yep. to hide the fish. And he'll probably check that area, but he won't be checking it yet. So Hera still gets value, I guess, from those fishing ships. So Hera building outposts now, looking for resources or maybe even looking for Viper. Definitely thinking about the long term here. He's scouting it now, Tristan. He's bringing the galley over. You, you oh, can't. Boy. You can't sneak you can't fish get away against, with this Viper. against Viper. No, yeah, you just can't. The Viper will know about that, and that's why we had said in the mixed map pool, right? Like, always got to favor Viper in these types of situations. But he oh. hasn't found it yet. He might he double saw back. One fish for a second. He saw it for a millisecond. Okay. No. 
Hera. What, what were we saying? We can't sneak fish against Viper. No way he's gonna miss that. No way oh he's gonna miss God, that. Oh my God, bro. He will maybe see it later on, but this is his time where he wants to kill those fish. Hera needs to use these galleys and he needs to kill as many fishing ships from Viper as possible. And Viper needs to be ready to flee because those galleys will just dive right past everything here. That is wild, dude. From Viper's perspective, he's like, there's definitely not a dock there. Yeah. It's a short. There's definitely not a dock. I've cleared it all. Honestly, if Hera had a deep fish a little bit further away, he would have been spotted mm -hmm. there. So the AoE gods blessing Hera there. Hera needed some luck here. And he goes with his galleys the other way. Okay, so that's just not... I guess he's going to try and sneak around. But Viper seems wise to it right now. And Viper's on the way to Castle Age already, Dave. Yeah. Viper kept bringing in boars there. So did Hera, to be fair. But Viper had his fish working the entire time. Those three extra fish he added on the way up to Feudal Age actually really helping him out here. And I think Viper sees the fire ship Eric's. now. I think Viper seeing that fire ship should tell him there's maybe another dock in there and he needs to double check. Yeah. Because he, he was monitoring the production from this first one the entire time. Do you feel but like Kara's he, being too he hesitant think it's with like, his galleys right now? Uh, He's going for a blacksmith. Maybe he's waiting for fletching. I guess it doesn't matter against the fishing ships. Because just... it's a two shot with three galleys either way. But look, he's looping. Yeah, dude, this is what I wanted to see initially. Oh, can Viper see it? No, he can't Viper see can't it, bro. see it. That's huge. <laughs> That's huge. Because if he kills six fishing ships... Hera's on so four sneaky. right now. He's so sneaky. I think Viper also could have been aware of that possibility. Remember, he wasn't thorough enough to find the fish from Hera in the middle. And while he might find out now that this is a problem, so he won't lose everything, great job from Hera here to recover on water. Mm -hmm. And this is what I mean. You just run right past the fires. Like Viper, Viper doesn't have another fire on the way. And by the time the fire is out, it won't be in time. Viper's actually switched his fire to the northern dock because he needs to run all the way there with his fish. Look how good the galleys are. This is crazy. Hera is going to kill another fishing ship. Viper will be able to probably take out these galleys, but Hera's going to snipe another one. Yeah, that's so good for Hera. So good. Knights are on the way, though, from Viper. He went for that barracks on the way up and the stable. Going for monastery as well. Already thinking about the walls. Hera has not walled his base. Mm. Not yet, anyway. He's working on it right now. Viper won't have the fishing eco he would have wanted to have. He is behind in fishing ships, so he probably won't produce many knights to get up many upgrades. But I think this knight's going to give him a lot of vision here. He could kill the dock villager, and also he'll know that there's a dock there. But that is if it travels that direction, and Hera's walling up. Hera's going to be fine. Hera's going to be able to drop a castle as well and go Conquistadors. We might even see the rare transport ship through the middle. That would be epic. Maybe. I mean, Viper doesn't even know where... <laughs> Viper doesn't even know where Hera's base is. Also, nice relic inside the woodline. <laughs> Love to see that. I would... Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> um, I would really have liked to have seen a scout from Viper. And Viper now sending his fires to the middle. He's had a lot of time here. He'll now find the fish. So and he'll be like, where did this come from? Yeah, where absolutely. On Earth? But I want people to pay attention to the farm upgrades and the amount on food here as we're seeing the TC transitions. This is where I've noticed Hera's really quick to the horse collar upgrade for those farms. And he has to go for a defensive castle. Okay. So he can't place the castle in front of his base. It will give him access to conquistadors, but the knights there are kind of forcing that decision from him. Yep. Viper could actually go for a transport ship of his own if he wanted to get cute. Oh, that's true. And send some knights over. But Hera's going for a second TC. So this is Conquistadors, but it's not at all in YOLO conks. Absolutely, yeah. I like this from Viper, though. He's going to use the water presence and the knights, and he's going to take out the Palisade wall. I think Hera will be fine because he can just, you know, wall out any pressure, but it is going to be some pressure on Hera that he has to deal with. The Viper with the horse collar click. And Dave, I, I'd like people to remember, even though Viper has the lead here, the Spanish just feel like the better civilization in the long term yeah. here. Like Malians, they might have a bonus where their gold lasts longer. That's with a civilization that doesn't get Halb, that doesn't get Bracer, that only gets Lightcav. It just it, it just doesn't feel like they have the greatest late game units. Spanish have Paladin, Conquistador, full trash upgrades, everything. So I think Hera will be fine to have stabilized in this game. Viper not really being aggressive here, just going to boom up as well at home. Do you think the Malians are a better option than what we saw yesterday with the Burmese? Do you think they have more 
like counters to the Spanish than the Burmese did? Because it seemed like Tato couldn't do anything, right? After a certain point. Um, I think they have as many. Okay. And I think I think that should tell you everything that I believe about the Malian late game because Tato struggled a lot to find the answers there. I was trying to get that relic in the wood line. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Might uh, go over there and chop those trees a little bit later on. We'll see. Viper does also, have three relics vision. already. Great vision from Viper. He's got the houses and the outposts up at the top. He has town watch already. So he's tracking the conks. Yep. And he knows where Hera's force is going to be. He's already going for house walls over there. And he makes some more to the shoreline. So Hera won't even be able to get some early chip damage with the conks. He's just forced to kill an outpost. Mm -hmm. And Viper is still controlling most of this map right now. Though he is losing knights at the back of Hera's base. Kind of avoidable there. Yeah, you would have. You would like to. Well, okay. The knights now, on two HP. Oh, Maybe Hera's gonna okay. just let it kill the outpost. All right, fair game. Uh, to be fair, that final shot didn't hit, and he probably thought it would have there. So, yeah, you're right. Like, you don't want the Conks to be able to run around and, and do a lot of damage here. And I think this is now a timing game for Viper. If he he knows exactly where Hera uh, is currently, and he's got lots of is vision. It like so I is think it monks into forward castle for him. Yep, is absolutely. That... Okay. I think so, Good. but he's on four TCs, and that's like pretty heavy eco. So he it... can go for fishing ships. He hasn't really made too many. He's made two extras. Yep. Hera's got to be careful here. That way. Hera's got to be careful. He needs to delete that conquistador. Sadly, he yep. does, and now he's got to delete the next one if he doesn't get away. And he does get away, but Viper knows there's two conks to the right. He lost the outpost to them. So Viper's going to go back, and Hera's actually just not really relying on the conks. I don't hate it, because it does seem like Viper's ready for it. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is uh, another stalemate <laughs> yep. On, yep. on Nomad. And Hera, once again, getting his... Like, he's not even attempting to get back on water to fish or anything, even though it's kind of open on that side. He's just going for farms right now. Eco upgrades uh, looking a little bit lacking for him, as he just gets the second wood upgrade. But he did lose his fish, so he didn't really have the food. He's putting that full onto villager production, and he is ahead in Vils currently. Ooh, However, this is Viper... going to be crazy here. Viper with the monks, and Hera deletes both the conks. Dead. Yikes. And Viper almost has enough stone for a castle. And that hill in front of Hera's base, Tristan, mm -hmm. looking very unfortunate. Yeah, and I, it is especially horrible if you don't have the map control. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure, like... It feels like if Viper had 500 food, he would absolutely go for that castle right now. I still don't hate it. I like it because it forces Hera to be creative. Hera has to um, somehow fight his way out of a, a bad position, but I'm not sure if Viper will do it. It is Viper after all. Remember we said it about that castle in the previous game. Sometimes he prefers the castle in the middle of his eco over the forward castle. Yeah. I think if you're, if you're Malians against Spanish, though, you got to pressure. Agreed. Viper getting handcart on 71 villagers when he didn't have it with 120 in the previous game. So this is a bit more relaxed. <laughs> this is a concerning number of conks here for Hera. Mm -hmm. Even with the misses, they can one-shot the monks from range because the odds are someone's going to hit. And the camels can just be uh, hit and run down after that. So if Viper wants to come forward here, he's going to need some more monks. This is not enough to hold this area unless he gets really timely conversions. The conks are coming in. Viper doesn't notice immediately. This is what you meant, right? And it's a good start for Hera. Hera does respect the monks and back away. But now Viper might be thinking, I'm not sure if I can place this castle. And he's sending the Vils. And I don't know. I would put my money on the Kongs here, Dave. Eight Conquistadors versus three monks and four units that don't have upgrades? I'm Kongs all the way. I'd send more Vils. And he puts it forward to it. He doesn't put it like a little bit back out of outside of Hera's vision. He puts it right within Hera's vision. Ay, 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 Hera ay, can ay. see the Vils now. They're going to start to build. This is a lot of Kongs. This is nine Conquistadors. Viper needs to get three conversions here. He is paying Hera's attention. Not, Hera's not contesting. He's not contesting at all. Really? I, I think you He's almost have to. Up. Yeah. I think you have to, and you snipe the monks first, and then you try and snipe a couple of Vils and hope for the best there. But yeah, I mean, now this is an amazing position for Viper, and now you, you sell all that wood. And just make sure you have the gold to go in. Fast Imp is the way here for Viper. He's going to take out some of the farm eco from Hera. He's going to take out a TC. He's in a position to tread that castle. And Hera deletes the wall and goes north with the conks. He goes north even though he's seen 
the Viper is fully house walled at home. Mm -hmm. So but, what is he expecting to find up here? I don't know. Well, what is interesting, though, is that Viper has outposts. So Viper will not be surprised by this. So Viper will know the conks are over there. Whether or not he respects them, I'm not sure. I mean, house walls could go down to conks, so he's got to send something home. But Dave, Viper wanted to finish this game before the crazy post imp that we saw in the series with Hera. And be yep. and also with the series where he played against Tato, because both players know how good the Spanish can be. Viper, dude. Viper's <laughs> chopping the relic out. <laughs> Is he actually chopping the relic out? Yeah. Dude, this guy, man. Again, I was a little concerned. We, we wanted to see both players at their best here today, right? And after the what, first game was, was rock solid from Hera, a little sloppy from Viper. It's become a bit of a meme with Viper, first game of the day and all that. But Bro, these this small is, moments. This is why he's the goat. Yeah, the, the small the things. <laughs> like even the stone wall there, if he would have trapped Hera's conks out there, Hera would have had yeah. massive problems. Yeah, and look at the Imperial Age trim. A minute and 20 seconds away, he even gets masonry here. Her How does Hera push this back? He's going to like have, of course he is. Why wouldn't he? It's Hera. He's just gonna make a bazillion farms, mm -hmm. 46 on food, and he's gonna try and take out the early siege with like Cav of his own. I, I wouldn't hate to see maybe like even a transport ship attempt or something here from Hera just to mix it up a little bit as Viper goes for that gate over there. That's not gonna last. Hey, now won't last, but he does see it. And so Hera, although kill the vill, does have to back away. I mean, it, it just really feels like Hera doesn't know what to do right now. Like, I mm -hmm. like have Conk could have worked for map control, but I don't think like have Conk is good against a castle unless you have Rams. He doesn't have that right now. You know, he's backed into a corner. He does have the eco lead. And when you think about Hera, you think of this level of execution. Get your eco rolling, create lots of units. But it's the tiny little things, the little details that Viper really uh, uses to separate himself from the, the opposition as he goes for heavy yeah. camel right away. He is going to yeah. wall up the north side. So, Hera, if he's going to fight anywhere, it has to be against that castle. And it's light cav versus heavy camel. So the first word each of those units' names should give you a hint on how that's going to go. <laughs> the heavy, the heavier unit will win. Is that a fat also, joke? Also, block printing coming in. I, they look pretty thin to me. <laughs> I mean, I guess the heavy unit's winning here. By the way, Viper's going to go for the Relic. And again, with crazy vision here, I'd be shocked if Viper really lets this position slip. We should remind people, though, that Castle Age or Imperial Age doesn't really matter. The Conquistador is a ridiculous unit. Yep. So it could, it could still one-shot all the camels, whether they're heavy or not. And it doesn't even really matter what type of upgrades those camels have either. Castle in the shoreline, and Hera's going to attempt to go for the transfer ship, I think. Well, if he does, I like that. Because currently, he's just responding to the Viper, and... Oh, fire galleys. Ooh. He's going to try and come back on water, Dave. I mean, he's under a lot of pressure, right? And he, he doesn't seem to have the situational awareness that's maybe needed here as Viper gets two conversions, and Hera <laughs> just taps out. Away. Viper is so must be so frustrating to play against, right? Like Hera gets those two conks converted, and instead of hanging around like most players and killing bills, Viper just brings them back. He's like, I can use these at a and, later date. And Hera Crazy. honestly was just sitting there. He was doing good. He was producing a lot of villagers, producing a lot of army. He didn't know where to go. He didn't know what to do. He got away with some sneaky fish early, and that helped him stay in the game. I really feel like the deciding moment in this game was Hera not trying to engage against the three camels one night and three monks. Mm -hmm. I think you have to know. You, you have, you have to, to that stop castle. that castle. It doesn't... Like, yep. if you lose the game because you can't stop the castle, so be it. But if that castle goes up, you're screwed. And yep. he chose not to. He was scared and maybe felt like Light Cav would have done it. But I think he's probably thinking now he wishes he would have taken the engagement. Viper, after losing the first game, has won three straight here, Dave. And uh, yep. he's just... It's the mixed map pool. It's knowing the situations that you will find yourself in on a map like Cross. On a map like Nomad, these are all very different from just Arabia, which he was also able to win. And Hera, I think he's really going to have to turn this around. He's got some good sieves and some good maps available. I think he's got more straightforward maps coming. So that can be better for his skill set. But Viper's looking so strong right now. Mm -hmm. 15 to 14, KD, in that game. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Hera knew it was over, right? He's behind an age, and... Uh... Viper just has the position. He's got the water control, even though Hera's going for fire galleys. That was very confusing. Also, credit to Viper, like, getting those outputs up and tracking all of those armies yeah. coming across early, right? Even the no house surprise. walls. 
right? Even the house wall, because the worst thing that can happen as a Spanish player is you have to delete your first couple of conquistadors, right? Yep. If he didn't have to delete those first couple of conquistadors, he might have had enough where he would have stopped that castle. So, um, you know, Viper tracking him the whole way through. But, but what does this say about Viper? The fact that a relic was bugged, it was in a wood line, and he took it. <laughs> yeah, and he he built the lumber camp there, and then immediately targeted a villager to that Did specific that tree. tree. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's, it's just, he's so calm and, and he understands all the situations here. Uh, I'd love to see Hera rebound though. We did say when he went down 2-1, we've seen Hera come back from 2-1, 3-1 deficits before. So we could easily do it again. I mean, Hera's playing some of the best Age of Empires he's played in his entire life. Absolutely. Recently. Yeah, this is peak Hera. And Viper just still able to, to find the answer three straight games after a pretty crushing... Game number one, I think he was, he could have easily been tilted there. Like, if I have that first game, I'm tilted and I can't really get my cool together. So, interesting uh, game here. We are in on Acropolis game number four. Viper has three match points in a row here. He needs one win of the next three to be season two Titans League champion. Um, Chinese, a fantastic civilization for Regicide Fortress, a fantastic civilization pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I thought Viper would have used Chinese on Regicide Fortress against Harris Cumins, which we'll hopefully get to see. And Viper opted for them here. What do you think about that, Dave? I think that he's probably going to go Italian some Regicide Fortress, right? Mm, maybe. To hit that transition, we saw him go Italians uh, against Tato Saracens, and that worked really well for him. Saracens, maybe question mark, but mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of tools that you can use on Regicide Fortress, and Chinese are very strong here. If you manage to survive, it's going to be hard to survive against Hera. And once again, Hera has a civilization where he can kind of spread it across the map and get into Hussar, <laughs> which we've seen him attempt last game. Uh, he attempted in the game before that, and he got to Hussar in the first game. So Yeah. You know, I, the other thing that I like about not using Chinese on Fortress is if you believe that Hera with Cumans on Fortress is so strong, you don't want to lose there with one of your best civs. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, using a later civilization on the draft, a civ that maybe hasn't been shown to be as dominant, but that you still believe to be solid, is probably better. Because otherwise, like, if you lose with Chinese a Regicide Fortress, and then you don't have Chinese available for this game, it could end up hurting for you. So Viper's given himself a really good chance here. I think if you were to ask Hera which civ he would prefer between Hindustanis and Chinese, I think he would actually say Chinese. Uh, but Hindustanis are right behind them, Dave, with the cheaper villagers, the faster attacking camels, and that's before you get to talk about some of their other bonuses that can happen in the late game. Hera also has some pretty appealing wood lines on the sides of his base. He's got that one in the corner, which he may not find, and it's pretty far away to go to. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. a late game option. And then he's got the one to the side. Viper's wood lines are all forward here, but he does have a lot of options. He's got five different options. Hera, really only with the two forward wood lines he can go to yeah i mean if hera wants to go to the wood line on the right for a second lumber camp viper might never find that and i think it's moments like that moments of creativity where you you don't mm -hmm. go to the expected location that could make the difference the viper's going to move forward viper's going to see the scout from hera and it's very easy to find your opponent here it's just not so easy to know which wood line they're taking 19 pop up from hera it's going to be scouts. Expected. Likely. And uh, April have to go 22 pop here. Back here. Yeah. Chinese have to go up a little bit later. They're going to soak that early pressure. It's going to have to try and not lose any villagers to Hera's aggression. But he should be fine if he manages to um, stall it out. His eco will kind of run ahead of Hera's mm -hmm. until yep. Castle Age at least. And remember that crazy Arabia game. So far, the best game of the series, I think, is Viper's got to be, whoa, 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 really careful. Ay, 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 ay. Hera almost gave him too much respect there, didn't Garrison. Um, yeah, remember the Arabia game and just how good Hera was with his scouts. I feel like it's so much easier to get value with scouts here. So mm -hmm. that this is good for Hera's skill set. He does need to get his barracks up, though. I haven't seen the barracks yet. So he might actually have a delayed stable. We see like super scout production into an extended feudal here? Or do you think both of these guys are going to think just a few units to open it up and then we transition to Castle Age? Hera goes super scouts for sure. I think okay. Viper, if he kills the first scout or two, I think then Viper's the type of guy to be like, all right, let's go castle. But 
to your point in the cross game earlier in the series, like Viper's not going to do that against Hera, I don't think. Like he normally is happy with getting away with the little greed, but he made a lot of scouts in that cross game when we thought he already had it won. So he's clearly respecting this guy and, and what his opponent can do to him. Okay, Hera gets the Feudal Age. He goes for the stable, and that is completely expected up to this point. Mm -hmm. I also like the way he's building his production buildings. It's going to be like Viper can get in here to the wood line, but it's going to be really awkward for him to do that. And it feels like there's a lot of areas on this hill that maybe Hera can jump on an army yeah. that would try and raid this wood line. And I don't think Viper's the type of guy to go for that forward tower too aggressively in Feudal Age. That's very true. Yeah, you're probably not going to see that. Hera's also not that type of player either. A Viper also doing a similar thing, making a stable right next to the wood line. And Viper's going to add some spearmen. And Hera now has his target. So Hera's taking the forward wood line. Viper's taking the forward wood line. And you know, sometimes you got to protect the wood. Other times you got to protect the berries. And farms are going to need to be coming out. Viper was able to squeeze in his horse collar upgrade, which is huge with the Chinese. He is kind of low on food, though. So I think there's a world where Viper can't produce as many scouts initially. Maybe that's why he was trying to steal the pigs <laughs> from Hera. Yeah. He's running low, but here we go. He's getting his farms down now. Hera, he can do this build in his sleep, I think. Yeah, yeah. This is this is precisely the type of game that he wants. And you know, win or lose here today, Hera's had an amazing uh, performance in Titans League, and, and you want to go out mm -hmm. playing to your strengths. So that's precisely what this build order would do for him. Viper strengths, quick walling, drops the Palisades, had his Spearman up on his hill... Expecting Hera to go there. And Hera is still looking for damage. He's going to have three scouts here. Viper also having some scouts, though. Viper also having the spears. It's an even fight so far. Nice micro there from Hera to get that yep. scout out of there. I actually thought that was Viper's spearman coming, but it was Hera's. And both players were a little bit nervous. Exactly the same army. Mm -hmm. And pretty much exactly the same HP on these scouts, right? Yep, pretty oh, close Hera's there. Ahead. Pretty by close. Five. Or no, Viper's ahead by five. Oh, God, but he's losing an entire scout in the middle of the map. And yep. ooh, that's, oh, no. that's rough. Misclick. Hera, I think, was maybe adding some walls around his wood line because he wants to be pushing forward, and I like that. Viper not really adding the walls ahead of time, as we've seen here in the series. He's been happy to quick wall. And this is the type of thing, like, that. that is so risky for him. He could easily lose villagers there, but he's still able to hold it off. Just the type of game that... You watching at home, people shouldn't try to play, but Viper can do it and does it consistently. Well, you can try to play it. The oh, yeah, yeah, last... you can try. It, Just it don't expect it to happen. The game, the game won't happen. last as long. Yeah, if you want a speed run, <laughs> try to play like that. So. And and to be fair, try and play like Hera as well. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, just... There's certain things that they're able to do because of their speed that's pretty impressive. But, I mean, this has been a pretty relaxed game so far. There's really only been one mistake. And that's been the fact that Hera lost that scout. Yeah, he also took a doink from one of the spearmen in the back there as he was trying to be a little bit too aggressive mm, in yeah. the berries. But I mean, if that's your only mistake, then... Absolutely. So be it, right? Viper kind of having some wood issues here, I've noticed, because he only has the five on wood. He's making a new lumber camp on his hill. And Viper knows Hera's going to go in and kill the weak spear, so he at least got a doink on Viper's scout... Uh, Hera's scout, excuse me. And it's actually... The same number of scouts. It'll be seven soon for both players. And I would, would, wouldn't would be shocked to see bloodlines are forging here in the long run. God, those quick As walls. As we've seen so often on Acropolis, right? These later stage games, people are just going feudal age army. It, usually we see tons of spearmen, tons of scouts, and then the archer range is added in. And then we carry that forward. But it looks like Viper is going to be able to defend here with Spearman and Scouts. He's not getting greedy. And that's a good sign for Viper, right? Sometimes the greed pays off. But against these top, top guys, a lot of times he just comes out of it mm -hmm. looking kind of foolish, right? Yep. And that, is, that has happened to him. But less frequently in this tournament, less frequently in the past year in general, if you think of Warlords, mm -hmm. it was these two in the final best of nine. I think Viper won 5-2 or 5-3. Another mixed map situation. But... Dave, there's one difference between what these players are doing right now. Viper's making a lot of spears. Hera's not. Like, Hera's on two spearmen. And when there's this many scouts out, you can't have only two spearmen unless everything's walled in. So I think Hera's going to have a relatively tough time defending unless, of course, he uses his own scouts, I guess. Yeah, the, the difference here is that Viper is free to go forward. 
Hera has to keep army at home mm-hmm. because Viper has those spearmen defending his base. Viper's going to see the scouts at home and be very confused, I think. Because initially he sees the spear and thinks easy kill. And now he sees the scouts, but Viper's going to have bloodlines. Hera does not. It looks like Hera's trying to go Castle Age. But this is, this is definitely greedy from Hera based on what we've seen. Let's see if he can hold. Hera getting caught in the greed. Ooh, this is a situation we're used to seeing Viper. Hera's actually bringing back his three scouts from the front of Viper's base. Mm-hmm. Is there an overchop into that wood line? Viper might be able to get in there. I don't know if he wants to get in there, even if he can. This greed might like just pay off. Like, if you had your scouts forward, you're dead, right? Yep. But you have it's numbers over decision. Viper. So yep. I actually think the correct decision for Viper now is bring every spearman forward because you know Hera is probably being greedy. Dude. Here come the spearmen, Dave. Great decision from Hera. And now Hera can get the upgrades. He's getting the gold mining upgrade first, but he's on the way to Castle Age. He can put his food now into upgrading his scouts and making more spearmen. Doesn't have to be greedy anymore. He can now produce military. And Viper is trying to push up this hill, but Hera is keeping his villagers alive and in good positions. Wondering if maybe we'll see a tower. Like, if you think that your army's stronger and Hera won't engage against you, you could go for a tower here if you're Viper. Here come the spearmen. Hera's still going to have some work to do to defend this. He won't want to take a fight here, but he might be forced to. And if he'll have the hill, it could be a good fight. Oh, they're in! They're in! They're in! And there's spearmen! The spearmen behind! The spearmen behind! The forging upgrade is in for Viper. Hera's going to hit Castle Age before him, but Bloodlines is just coming in now. And all the villagers are going to die. Hera did not repair, repair that gate in time. He didn't. If he kills Viper's army... It might not actually be too horrible. He's lost six villagers, but he will be in Castle Age. He's actually going to come out of this feeling pain, obviously, but in a position where he can make camels. But, I mean, yeah, Dave, he just ran out of wood. The scouts were on the hill there. Viper finds a payoff for his additional military investment. Viper is switching into archers here. There is a moment in this switch where Hera could potentially do damage because Viper has yep. no more scouts. Yep, yep, yep. And he's only got spears. These scouts can run around the spearmen, the best thing about having scouts of your own is they can keep up with your enemy, right? Mm -hmm. And they can at least push them away from your resources. Hera now getting the armor, has foraging, has bloodlines. He could find some villager kills from Viper if Viper's not careful. Yeah, and, and especially this woodline, he's now dropping houses, but it's so yeah. easy to lose track of this and lose all these villagers, and then suddenly so Hera's right too. back in it. And Hera also dropping the second town center. So, I mean, Hera might not be able to afford that much army, which is the concern, but he will recover in villagers, most likely. Such a great timing from him, right? Might be able to snipe a vill here. Viper goes for... A random gate? That didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> He's trying to stop the guy from hitting his house, I guess. I don't... Uh, maybe I don't if you know, see dude. the gate, you just think that Viper uh... has a master plan, so you freak out. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, Hera's trying to calculate it, so I'm not messing around with that. Uh, light Cav coming in for Hera, and he's not producing camels. Yeah, so no he's camels. Just going light Cav a husbandry. He's going to go for that second TC, try and catch up with villagers, and just distract the hell out of Viper with these units. How does Hera take wood long term? Uh, I, that's what's going through my mind. If Viper goes crossbow pikes... Yeah, he just he just dominates Hera that forward wood still line. Still hasn't seen the wood line in the back either. That could be an option, right? Yeah, yeah, true. You also, could fit a TC over there. I would have liked. I mean, maybe it's too greedy, but at least your third TC's got to go to the right. That's a really nice spot away from any pressure. So six eco kills for Viper in this game. He hasn't lost a single one. He does have the eco lead slightly. I think in terms of the food on his farms and all those bonuses Chinese have, you've got to be excited if you're a Viper fan right now. And Hera's fallen yep. back, Dave. This is not the approach he would have wanted. It's a passive defensive style. And he's forced for a watchtower on his woodline mm. because he doesn't have any other options, right? Yeah. He barely sees the woodline on the right. If he saw the woodline at the back, I feel like he would have TC'd back there just for peace of mind. Yep. I, I do like the tower, though, because I think that's his most vulnerable area. It was very resourceful from him to take the stone. He's actually taking stone even heavier right now, so he might even see a castle in his near future. But he's, he's got a mangonel, too, so he, yeah. he noticed the archers early. And Viper is just, he's just playing patiently, as mm -hmm. he often does, right? He's got the crossbows protecting his TC. He's nervous about those light cav. He's not pressuring. I don't think Hera's shown the mangonel to Viper yet. No, he hasn't. Viper's going to be like, just like Cab. I haven't seen any raids 
I, I kind of like it from Viper, because remember in the Mayans game how he kept going forward with five crossbows? Mm -hmm. At this game, he's waiting till he has about 15 with the spears in front. And also on this map, you don't want Hera with Lightcap to be able to stop your TCs. So and those Viper's TCs are, for Lightcap too. are awesome right now, yeah. Viper is going for Lightcap as well. He hasn't even seen the monks from Hera, but... Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he hasn't seen anything from Hera, so yeah. it's probably going to be Boom with a monastery to pick up the relics. Big moment good, for Hera uh, here. If he can, if he can land a big shot, Viper doesn't know this thing is out there, and now he knows. Now. All right, so Siege Monk defense from Hera. The, the light cab are still there. Viper's going to be thinking, "Hmm, that's it. That's all you've got." And Hera had to abandon the TC here, Dave. I know Manganel is good against crossbows, but. Viper's in a nice position. He did find out that the tower was there on the wood line because he had set one crossbowman there. And Hera fighting for his finals life here, and Emanganel's on the wrong side of the TC. Does lose one villager, but it's only one. He pulled the others in away in time. It's going to convert a spear. Never mind. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And Viper just dodges that Manganel shot so hard to hit Viper with a mango shot, even in these confined spaces. Dips Hera. away with the Spearman. Hera's going to need a godly attack round here. Hera's no offense right now. It's only defense. Only two TCs. Viper's pulling way ahead here. And Viper, it just doesn't look like he can do anything wrong right now. It's so much control. Now, his farming eco isn't great. It's 14 on food. But as I say that, he's adding farms at home. He does back away. And I think he'll just consider this a victory that he's delayed that TC as long as he has. It's just, it must be so frustrating for Hera, right? It must just be so frustrating. Like, this guy is, I can't hit him. Mm -hmm. I can't damage him. He's always got army pushing me, and he always has a better eco. Yeah, and remember, like, his approach in every other game would have been all in scouts on this map, but he tried stuff like that before in Viper 1. So he tried to change it, and then Viper took control against him, and Viper with some micro, there will be repairs for Hera. But Hera's Meganel goes down. There's another one, though. And he lands some decent shots, but still Viper's been underneath the tower, killed two more villagers, and still the TC hasn't gone up for Hera. He's got such a military problem right now. Mm -hmm. And he can't even make the switch onto Ghulams right now. He's mm -mm. going for a fourth TC on the left side. He's making some more farms, but he's only got one on stone currently. He needs that TC up on the right side. Look at the idle TC time from both players and explain how they're able to manage that. Sanity. <laughs> It's, and remember, it's, it's Viper, Viper is going to get an automatic like 20, 25 seconds from the Chinese start yep. of Idle TC. So they pretty much had the same amount of Idle TC time this entire time. Villagers pumping. But hey, finally, Hera like gets that. to breathe. Yeah, finally he yep, gets to breathe. He, like he might clear this now, and he'll complete the TC at the very least. Viper going for TC number four as well, though we should notice that Hera's got three TCs up on this hill. He still doesn't have any TCs in his wood lines. And Viper's got three TCs down on the bottom, which is exactly where you want to be, I think. Stables are coming up. And once again, it's a situation where Viper needs to produce. He can't be caught in the transition when he's still building his eco and trying to go imp. Even though he's done some really legitimate damage against Ooh. Hera, as Hera loses these light cav against Spearman, avoidable. Um, he has to produce military. He's got to go for camels, light cav of his own, keep building crossbows, go for castles. Because Hera can punish him here in the transition if he's not careful. Oh, Hera's like, at least let me boom up, get some relics. Viper's light cap. There. Kills the monk. So, he so easily could get away with not ever having one light cap in that position. And Viper's going to add his own camels now. He's still got 20 crossbows, and it just feels like he's still waiting. He's got a group on the left, Dave. Hera's going to have to go deal with that. And it's just like, time and time again, Hera's going to be reacting to the Viper. And if you give Viper time, as we've seen already in this series... He's going to be able to pick his spots and eventually grind you down. Viper's on stone now. He's going to get some castles up, probably on the left side to defend himself eventually. Hera's also on stone, thinking about going into castles for maybe golems. Hera's going to send these light cav over here, and that's another crossbow army that Viper's going to lose. Mm -hmm. It's interesting Viper's continuing to make the crossbowmen. He clearly has faith in the combination of crossbowmen with some stable units of his own. But yeah, he will lose that. And I remember the Arabia game where he kept losing armies and obviously Viper ended up winning that game somehow. Uh, Hera also sniped a monk there in the middle. That relic, <laughs> it's dangerous. Another another crossbow army coming in here, Tristan. Viper. Is this a repeat? 
He loves his crossbowman, but this time he has Cav as well, whereas he didn't in the other game. And Hera with a good attack round. Viper, though, splits away from it. And he's going to have to focus on the camels here. And like you said, Dave, just Viper pushing forward. I would have actually loved to see the pikeman choice instead of his own camels. I still think he's okay, though. Those camels from Hera are just too vulnerable in this fight. Hera's catching up in eco, though, but Viper has handcart behind this. So mm. Viper's eco flying right now. Hera's going for counter raids, and he's killing villagers on the gold. First villagers Hera's been able to kill in this game. Viper now getting ballistics. He's going to be adding more cav. Still wondering, like, where is Hera going to take wood? He hasn't scouted the, he's the seen, south he's side. He's seen the wood line in the south. Oh, he he's has seen, seen it. South. Yeah, he saw it with the monk. Okay, then he needs to be and getting there if he's he can. He's going for a castle where? Well, you, you almost want it in the middle here. I, I, I know you're kind of struggling right now, Hera, but you're in a good population. You've got to go middle castle here to have any chance, he's, I think. He's got plus two armor. Viper does not have the plus two armor yet. And he's got plus two attack even for his camels. Yeah, full stable up. I think Hera can get away with this. If Viper were to just spot those gold miners right now, the devastation it would cause. Hera is running out of gold in this hill slowly. And there's the Viper castle goes, going up. Yep. Viper goes for his sixth TC, by the way. It's a lot of town centers. Hera's still in this game, Dave. Like you said, lots of upgrades, and he's got tons of production. Mm -hmm. Viper's been... And if he if he attacks here, I think he forces the army from Viper back, so it's not a threat anymore. Yep. Yeah, here it comes. Viper saw the castle too, which is important for him because it could have come as a surprise, but that does leave him open to a big raid if Hera wishes to run in there. There's no castles for Viper. And Hera has faith in the Hindustani camels and their attack speed, and Viper this says, I have to take the army. fight. This is a powerful army from Hera. Hera's going to run through these camels, and then he's going to start focusing on the crossbows. How many crossbows can Viper get out of here with? Dude, he's killing so many camels, though. Like, I, I know that Hera might kind of win the fight, but so many camels have had to go down here, and you still can't push and win the game with camels. At least you can't push underneath TCs Viper like loses this. loses all of the crossbows. And he's balancing his eco. He's going to try and go up to Imp, but what is the army for Viper? It's only 11. We got plus two armor here for Hera. Hera's got to go Ghoulims right now, too. Like, everything you can, throw it at Viper. The Viper, stop production there for a second. He's clearly thinking of Imp, Dave, and he's going to drop a castle in the middle. Can Hera see that? Hera can see the foundation. Can, if he could deny that, Hera's got a real shot here. I don't think he can. Not with the walls from Viper. Very smart walls there from Viper. He's still killing. Hera is. And Hera has taken the eco lead here, but Viper is already on the way to imp. Hera's about to click up soon. Oh, yeah, good job man. from Hera there to recognize that the type of game this is going to be. He's yep. now cancel it, canceled all those camels. And he and could Viper's actually go find himself with, uh, with two castles versus one there in the middle. Yep, Viper's going to go into help here. The Viper's making TC barracks. helped a little bit there. Viper's still making crossbowmen. Yeah, I think Viper, he just knows that if he goes into his own stable units, they're worse. Uh, and he just wants to stay on those archers. Of course, the Ghulam is a threat. But he believes Hera's going to go for the stable units. And he would be right on that as Hera kills more villagers. Hera's now killed more villagers than Viper in this game. And now Hera's taking the time to stall out production, right? He's building up, getting handcart, and it's Viper's turn to maybe take a decisive fight and push forward. I'm really surprised Viper doesn't have more on stone. It's like he can't find it. Um, he hasn't actually scouted the stone on the left, and there's a two-tile stone up on his hill that he hasn't taken. And Hera's got... I mean, he his continuous stone income from up on top okay, of his Viper hill. Viper finds that stone on the left. Finds one of them anyway. I'm trying to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sees one of those stones indeed, Dave. But Viper... I, I, this is the only weakness of his play in the finals. Late to Pikeman. Every single time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still fine if he gets the Pikeman, but you've got to make sure you click Pikeman so you can immediately click Halb. There I, it is. I think the, the semifinals was the most egregious. <laughs> yeah, that one was really bad. Yeah, it's true. So I've, I nice haven't school. seen it a lot, but I've, I've fought with Ghoulams against Halbs before, and because Ghoulams are, are so trash with their melee armor... The Halbs actually do a decent job. I think you need Elite, and yeah. then you're fine. Yeah, Yeah, like, Elite Ghulam should beat Halbs, but considering Hera only has two castles and will possibly be losing his castles to Trebs, we'll see. But I love the, the castle is, like, on Ghulam... the right side for Hera, because look where Viper's going right now. Yeah. And Hera's going to expand his farming eco, no surprise there. Viper will run right into the castle. 
Hera should see that, though. He's probably going to lose a few villagers here. Hera trying to expand. The Viper going to go light cav as well. Hera reacts after losing a lot of the villagers there. Big economies for both players. I'd like to see Viper wall in his trebs in the middle. He can't even make the second treb, by the way, because he's currently fully pop capped. Hera's just going all into the golem. He's getting elite. It's from that castle. Oh, man. Elite golem commitment when he could lose that castle. It's going to mean he clears up a lot of army, though, from Viper. He'll absolutely yeah. clear up the archers, and Viper's got a fair amount of archers on the field right now. Viper sees the golem now. And he's still, he's still got the Arbalist in the right corner, cutting off the gold, the stone, the farm. So beautiful for Oh, Viper. no, Hera, don't he's fight before the upgrades. He should be fine. He's going to clear this completely. Hera's castle in the middle will still be going down. Viper's Treb's still there. Hera's population 160, army population 21. Viper's like have picked a couple spots with raids on the left. Mm -hmm. In the middle now, he's looking around, but Hera's tracking it nicely. Viper's going to go into champs here. What? He's making a lot of barracks. He's got 2,700 gold, gold in the bank right now. I, I actually wow. really, with that much gold, I actually like the continuation of uh, Light Cabin Arbs. The only thing yeah. I'll say, though, is you might want to consider buying castles to protect your eco. Because yeah, the only thing Viper's missed in this game is more access to stone. If he had more access to stone, he'd have castles like Hera does. But you just can't go wrong with raiding the Ghulam player because the Ghulam player wants to push. But using Ghulams to defend is just has. so difficult. Such a comfortable position, right? You control the middle of the map. You're mm -hmm. raiding your opponent. You have almost 3,000 gold in the bank and you're pop capped. <laughs> and, and you're Chinese. <laughs> you can yeah. you can do... You can max out on this even further, right? Yeah. Hera going... Hera, though, refuses to die. He just refuses to die. And once again, he's going under Hussar. He's got Blast Furnace on the way. He's got farms coming up. His farm eco is insane. 65. I... Considering all the places Viper's been picking away at him. So good. Yeah, Hera is... He's amazing at execution, right? Like, the, the, you just can't really kill the guy off. Um, Viper, amazing with execution as well, obviously. But just crazy strategist, knowing what to do, where to apply the pressure. Nice raid at the south from Viper on the wood line. Mm -hmm. As he Big pushes find. here... Probably going to kill a lot of villagers. Also still denying everything over on the right side with two Arbalists, and he's paying attention to them. However, the Ghulams are coming in, and the Ghulams are upgraded. Yep. They're going to rip through these Helves, and then they're going to rip through these Arbalists, take out the Trebs. Viper is raiding, and Hera's responding to that. But on the main fights, Hera's doing quite well, and Hera also has a Hussar raid in the north. Viper's got to be very careful here. Yeah, this is where the Hindustanis can thrive. Viper's actually going for Cavalier, which I love as they should do better against the Ghulams, but he's lost his Trebs. Great job from Hera on that right side. To react to those two Arbs there while doing everything else yep. is insane. And, and Viper's got all, He doesn't have the castles, Dave. I'm telling you, had he bought Whoa. stone for castles, he might have been able to defend from these raids. Or just even stone walls forward, yeah. right? Yep. Just cut off the units, force them into choke points. The Hussars are in the back of his base. These are fully upgraded Hussars. Hera is pushing back here, folks. Hera is pushing back on the back of the Ghulam. Viper's still with a ton of gold in the bank, and the Cavalier will do very well against the Ghulam. But look at Hera. He's switching into heavy camels now. And it, it just feels like this army composition from Hera might not be able to be stopped by the Chinese. Maybe why he wanted to boom so much in the first place in Castle Age. Elite Ghulam. The, the possibility of Imperial Camel. And by the way, the camels also attack faster. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, good luck dealing with it. The Chinese, they've got plain old regular units. They just have a lot of options. When Hera pushes forward here, I think he's going to need like three trebs, three or four trebs. He and should be massing them. One at a time. Yep. And then you take out that castle in the middle and Viper's base is wide open. Viper also has trebs waiting. I, I don't know where they are. Capture Age tells me they're out there. And he also found that stone. And I think just one or two additional castles for Viper is great. Hera needed that raid followed up by a treb push. And he didn't have it, Dave. And mm -hmm. somehow Viper stabilized here and he even buys the stone. He's going to drop the castle in the north. And that's just the perfect spot, right? Because look at all those Ghulams coming through and ripping through those arbs. Ghulams can't ignore castles to an extent. So Viper has to be careful there. And Viper has to pay attention because they could even deny this mm -hmm. if Hera notices. And Viper goes for walls. He walls off the castle there to the TC. And he's going to get that complete. It's crazy you can pay attention to something like that while you're still pushing forward on the other side. Hera's beginning to mass trebs. He's got another one in the queue. He's got heavy camel now. 
but his eco, his resources are pretty strained. Yeah. Right? Limited gold, and we look over at Viper. He's got plenty in the bank. Still, Hera has managed to clear up every army that Viper has sent forward towards him. Yeah, Hera ha is actually going to have a wood problem more than anything if he if he takes the wood in the corners. It, but he seems pretty well defended in those areas. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a long time. It's just we've seen games go on long enough, especially in Ghost Lake in this tourney. Viper just continuously raiding the sides, uh, both at the same time right now. And now you start to see the trebs for Hera be masked. But Hera, you've got to protect those trebs. You cannot lose a trebuchet to three arbalest here. Like that, this is just I like. I mean, look at look at all the dots though on his mini map right now. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's just <laughs> that's insanity. True. Viper is raiding on the right. Viper is raiding through the center. Viper is raiding on the left. Viper Hera does see the trebs. The maybe. And Viper sees the trebs and he's gonna come in here and snipe these. Yeah. Oh man, Hera. He didn't lose the weak one yet. Viper's light caver there. He's gonna take it out. Now Viper could lose his trebs as well though. Mm -hmm. Hera's still got lots Arbalist of hustlers too. in queue. Is Ghoulims? Oh man, when they get an engagement against the Arbalist, Hera has them on stand ground. Rip. 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 Oh, God. oh man. But he's he's busy, Dave. It's been interesting to see Viper move forward so boldly with the Halb Arbalest combination in the center area. He's like kind of cutting off Hera's reinforcements. It wasn't that many units. Oh, Viper's still waiting on the right side too. Oh my God, dude. And Hera's just like, I'm sick of it. I'm going to stonewall yeah. this. And credit to him for continuing to fight. I really felt like with the 3-1 scoreline that he was going to be finished off an imp, but this is why he booms. He only has oh, 54 arbalist. on food, though. He doesn't have the 70 on food he had before. He'll get there soon. <laughs> give, give him like 30 seconds, right? Yeah, <laughs> 30 yeah. Seconds Feels like it. Viper's not giving him that time, though. He comes in again with Cavalier this time on the right side. Won't let Hera get back to those farms. At some point, Hera has to just abandon these farms, maybe wall off the golds over there and keep taking them and then shift his farms over to the left side. But it's so difficult. He takes a big fight in the middle. Ghoulims are there getting the pass through damage. Viper lost a lot as Hera goes for Petard. Petard, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why. I'm going to assume that was a stress misclick. Viper seems very happy with the, with the present situation, provided that he's not receiving a lot of raids. Mm-hmm. He's, he's taking some level of risk, but he's not going all in. He always has a, a ball of arbs and halves in the middle. And also, the other crazy thing is, if I'm in Viper's position, and I see Hera has that three-tile gold in the back corner, I would have said, okay, he gets that, and I can't do anything about it a long time ago. Yeah. But he yeah. just hasn't he hasn't allowed Hera to take it, and it's really affected Hera's golem production. Hera only has two golems, and he's got 17 camels as we have a pause now. Okay, this will let both players just kind of recoup. I don't know if there's like lag or something like that. I think it's but, a, uh, a you, stress how, pause for Hera at the how moment. How do you like? How do you refresh yourself from this? Like, where, what? What are you focusing on now? Well, if you're Viper, you just keep sending units to that gold, and then build up some trebs and try and get a nice push, right? If you're Hera, where do you hit Viper? Can well, counterattack. Yeah, so I think I think what Hera needs to be telling himself right now. Again, I assume that. It is a pause because you're like, oh, crap, I'm going to lose this game. So let me think about this. Yes. Um, you you got to think about a big snowball, right? You, you are reacting constantly. You need four trebs and you need to push Viper's castles on the sides to open him up. The problem is mm -hmm. it feels like you are a couple steps removed from that here, Dave. The Viper's just all over you, everywhere Ooh. you look. Hera goes for even more forward walls over on that side. He's taking the stone now, but there's another army coming in from Viper. And of course, he can't wall over that stone terrain. It's just constant reinforcements this way from Viper at the back of Hera's base. Those four light caver distracting so many units from Hera. And I, I don't even know how you stop the the tiny little ball, the Cavalier Halb Arbalest. This is the power of the Chinese. We saw the power of the Hindustanis, but the Hindustanis have like three things you get super excited about in him. Chinese can do pretty much everything. And, oh, this is an awful fight for Hera. This is the worst possible fight for him. He's going to lose all of his camels in this engagement. Trying to take out the Arbalist, but he doesn't have any Ghoulim left over, right? And look at the population going down for Hera. Viper's got reinforcements coming. Hera has more Hussar on the way. He goes for a castle to help defend himself, so he's not giving up. He's not giving up. Love the micro here from Viper. His trebs are also waiting. He did miss micro pretty badly right when I said that. He clicked that the stable. But Dave, I just think Viper's got more reinforcements coming. And there's another group of Cavalier. I'm not sure about the rating with Cavalier, by the way. I prefer Lightcap, but... An ill-advised castle from Hera. 
Terra at 30 army now, and it's seven golems, two camels, and nine hussars. Yeah. And it's the end. Um, I you... think, like, you know, to sum up this series, I think it's just the goat being the goat. Mm -hmm. He was so good, Dave, on every single setting. Hera was demolishing people coming into this tournament. Hera had 14 wins and one loss in the group stage. No one else had ever done that, including the Viper. And we had some crazy playoffs. We had some epic sets with Hera's crazy victory in the semifinal against his teammate Leary yesterday. But Viper, man, you put him into any type of setting and it just looks like he knows exactly what to do. Hera really tried to change his approach in this game. And yep. he tried to go for the greedy castle age. Not something he's normally known for. Still wasn't enough to beat Viper. Viper wins 4-1. Crazy series. It's just, Hera, like, Hera, usually we get to late game and we say Hera is favored here, right? Yep. Hera's favored. He's going to use his speed. He's going to use his reinforcements, his ability to macro, to get out of it. Not against Viper. Viper takes it slow. Viper takes it steady. And he's so much more calm, it feels like. You can see it through his play style. Yep. How calm he is in those situations. And it's just a really good matchup against Hera. Hera win it, or losing 4-1 after taking the first game. That's four games in a row for Viper. And he deserves it, honestly. He really does. Great run through the quarters, the semis, and the finals here for the Snake. Yeah, and the, the cool thing for Hera, obviously, is, you know, another deep run in Titans League. Second place is obviously, you know, uh, something you can still be proud of. I think it says, to, if anyone who, who will feel like maybe second place is a disappointment to Hera, I think it says everything you could say about Hera as a player and the potential that he has. But the big separator between Viper and Hera here is the same separator that I believe would have happened in any single type of situation here is that Viper is better on all maps, right? If you want to talk like Empire Wars and a lot of open maps, open settings all the time, if you want to talk about all Arabia, I don't think I put Viper, maybe even my top two. I might go Hera Leary, but it's the tiny little situations that you find yourself in on Nomad or find yourself in on Arabia where like, how, how did that even happen in game number two? Or is, is performance across the entire tournament that Viper normally uh, takes control of? So it was a great final, man. It was great playoffs and a pleasure to cast this one. Congratulations, Viper. Uh, we are going to get him in for an interview in a second. I can't promise to get everyone's questions. Uh, but I will do my very best. See what he thinks about the series. Also, shout out to Jordan. Viper beating Tata, what, 4-1? 4-2? Something mm -hmm. like that? Beating Hera, 4-1. And then took to the very limit by Jordan. True. In the quarters. Yeah, I mean, Viper was playing this well against Jordan as well. And yeah. I, I really thought Jordan was going to win that series. That was a ridiculous quarterfinal. Um, all right, so uh, interviews, uh, as always, because we spend our diner casting, we're, they're not really something that we structure. Um, Dave and I will probably just flip back and forth asking Viper questions. Let's see if we can get him in on a call here. And here. there is the snake, Viper. How's it feel Hello. to be a season two champion, my friend? Tiring. Yeah? Yeah. Wow, that's all you have to say? <laughs> It's hard, man. Like both, like yesterday, uh, all the rounds now. So you really have to work for these wins. Mm -hmm. Against Jordan was obviously super tight. Tato, even though it was four one, you really made me work for some of those. And today as well, four one is not an indicator of the reality of the the, the games, right? They were, he made me work for it on most of those games. Yeah, we'll break through it. We won't take too much of your time. Uh, believe me, the level that everyone's played at in the playoffs, I can understand the exhaustion. Um, you went through your teammates to get here to the final. Uh, Hera hyped up for good reason. Hera obviously uh, brings insane aggression, typically. So what were your uh, thoughts on the series coming into this? I don't think I agree with what you're saying. Hera brings insane aggression. He's more of a macro. He takes aggression when he finds it. But mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily strike me as an aggressive player compared to, for example, Leary, right? Okay. Uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I disagree with you, T90, but uh, I don't remember yeah, what your initial question. <laughs> no, that's fine. Interested. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now the focus. Uh, what was the question? No, no, no. My, my question was, like, what were your thoughts coming into the series? Like, you know, anything in general? Uh, uh, not much. Uh, obviously, knowing that Hera is an insanely good player, uh, just coming in, try to get a good draft, try to play well, and hopefully get some good RNG in some maps, like Nomad, for example. And yeah, I mean... 
you can't really think too much because you start thinking about every single outcome uh, or possibility or whatever. I think it's more worse for you rather than if you just enter with a, a clear mindset mind and kind of chill. Yeah. Um, Viper, so what... sorry to interrupt, Dave. Viper, is it possible you could boost yourself on your end just by like 20%? Uh, I don't think it's possible. I have oh. everything on max. Okay, you just I got louder. Yelling. Yeah, because I'm in the eating the microphone and yelling right now. Okay, keep Is eating. That better? The, keep eating the microphone, Dave. Go ahead. Okay. Viper, what happened yes. in game one? Take me through the start to get. You don't have to yell at me, all right? You just yell at him. Oh, you. Okay. You hear me fine? Okay. I have you boosted at two hundred. So, <laughs> so do I. We're, we're Gucci. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, game one. Uh, obviously, you no know, first game of the tendencies. Macro wasn't on point, uh, but yep. yeah, the, the scouts really caught me off guard. I only noticed them when they were already killing like three, four bills. And I was like, oh, well. So yeah, I probably should have walled my base completely just in case, because he was Mongols, it was clear. I also wasted my scout there, so I didn't have information. Like I picked up one villager with my scout, and I should have just stayed around in his base, look around, see what's happening, but I wasted it. So I had no information and kind of assumed that he would do something else. And then the scouts came in and they surprised me. And yeah, it was an uphill battle from there. Why did you never attempt to go for the gold in the south? I, I, I scouted what he had on the top, and I was like, uh, that's probably not his main, because I thought he didn't have that mm. much up there. Mm. So I thought he was already at the bottom, and the top was like his secondary. So I figured I have to push the top. Uh, but yeah, in hindsight, I should have scouted the bottom, obviously, and should have gone there. Uh, I went there a little bit too late. Well, game two, Viper. Obviously frustrated to lose the first game, but you know it's going to be a long series. Uh, did you expect Hera to open the way he did or the way he attempted to open? Or was that just a good heads up play to spot his villager docking your pond? Ah, uh, game two was cross. Yeah, um, I mean, it's Persians. Persians are great for docking in the enemy lake, right? Because uh, you have double the HP and work faster, so you can kind of win the lake almost with one dock. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I was aware that he might sneak, so I was always going to scout for it. But the fact that I found him in the middle of the map was obviously very fortunate. And then from that, it kind of played out perfectly. I could dock his pond, deny him docking my pond, and play from there. But e even that game, like, Hera just makes so many units. And, like, if you make one or two mistakes in games like that, Hera will suddenly snowball that into a really scary position. Yeah, it felt like, from my assessment of the situation, it felt like you really respected that, too. Because I think in a lot of instances, when you have that much success on water, you might just go Castle Age against other players. Yeah. But you made, like, a ton of feudal army there. Yeah, I think a ton of fuel army just to make sure he also has to make something and then wall at my base was the key. Uh, from there, I feel like, okay, as soon as I can trade a little bit with his army, I can go to Castle Age and that's exactly what happened. But but even then, right, uh, I think he took one bad fight where he fought, like, I had like four knights in the middle and he mm -hmm. took a fight against them. I think that was a mistake from him. Uh, but yeah, other, otherwise, uh, like, again, two or three mistakes from me there and it could easily snowball. Okay. So game three was Arabia, right? Yep. I think it was Arabia. That was a crazy yeah. game. At what point did you realize that you had kind of made the comeback from the corner? Uh, well, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was behind the whole game. I'm not sure what the village account was because I, I kept mm. trading army for villagers to a certain extent. So I wasn't sure how the eco looked like. Maybe you can tell me. Um. Well, he, he had the advantage to Imperial Age. You had a uh -huh. lot of bills, but... He was still at like 120 or something like that. I think you were at 130, okay. but he was okay. he had an imp on you, so that's why it seemed like super far ahead, right? With that forward castle. Okay, I didn't think he had 120 bills. So I wasn't like, I was still kind of feeling okay because I was like, okay, I just need to make pikemen because his transition looks to be cavalier. Because I saw him adding even more stables, so it was like trebs and cavalier. Okay, well, if I can just buy time with pikemen and then get to him because I still had two full golds to mine in the back of my base or in the corner. Uh, then I could maybe make a Halberdier Eagle play and make a comeback because that's also a composition that is really hard to stop mm -hmm. for the Khmer. And uh, yeah, it, it kind of worked out. I mean, the raids never really killed villagers, right? So I always felt like I was kind of okay. But uh, yeah, obviously, I didn't feel like I was ahead. But I yeah, it felt was... like I had a fighting chance. I mean, it's you also remember from our perspective too, we see Hera with 75 farms and defensive yeah, yeah. castles. And we're just like, well, sense. you know, this could be really tricky for Viper right now. Um, yeah. I have a really specific question from er earlier on in that game. Uh, you mm -hmm. took an engagement. You moved out, right, against Harris Scouts and Skirms. Uh, did you expect that he was like go going to hit Castellade shortly? Did you intentionally take that engagement uh, to trade against his army? 
or did you like get caught out there and realize uh, I might as well take the fight? Like, what was your logic with that, with moving out there and then taking that fight, if you remember? Uh, I, I thought it was on the way to cast stage, but I did like armor and attack upgrades on my infantry. So I was like, I'm, I need to try and force a fight a little bit here. And I, I honestly thought I would trade better than I okay. did. Uh, but in the end, I still think the trade was somewhat okay because he lost a lot of his scouts. Um, so in the end, I felt like after that, I was still not too unhappy with the trade, but obviously I wish I traded better than I, I thought I would trade better. Okay, I was just curious because like, it, it feels like when you're up against Hera, if he hasn't taken eco damage and he has 8 to 10 light cav, he's just going to run circles around you with those light cav. Yeah. So I was, I was curious if, if you were forcing a trade before castle. Seems like almost like I thought in the moment while casting it that you just thought that the fight would be better in general. Yeah, I, I did so. And of course, I'm aware Hera loves to play light cav. You run around your farm, snipe villagers, whatever, find damage wherever you can. And yeah. that's obviously one of his strengths that I'm very much aware of. Uh, he's obviously a very quick player. So. Sometimes you take some fights or decisions that might not normally take, but considering that it was Hera, maybe it was actually good. Okay, gotcha. Nomad, you did a really good job with the uh, the forward dock and everything. Obviously, you didn't notice initially the dock in the lake, which must have been pretty frustrating. Mm. But I have one question about that game because it's pretty straightforward how that panned out. How how good did it feel to take that relic after you chopped it out of the wood? <laughs> oh God, dude! <laughs> it's so satisfying. Yeah, man, I was working. I tried to get it earlier, right? And I couldn't get it. I was pretty sad. <laughs> so the forward castle was not to push him. It was to secure the relic. <laughs> um, I was kidding, but yeah, no, Nomad was like, uh, you can't ask for a better start for Marlins, right? Three yeah. rows kind of next to each other. The dock had two deep fish right next to it. And then I scouted his dock as well immediately. It was like, that was the absolute perfect Nomad game you can expect with Marlins. And uh, obviously not finding his fish in the middle was a bit... Uh, I thought he actually abandoned water when he saw how close I was. So I was like, I killed three fishing ships. I was like, maybe he just didn't add more. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, as I realized, I missed those fish. Uh, that would have helped a lot to take those out earlier as well. Yeah, it was, it was, you were one tile off, right? It was like yeah. one of those things with how bad the start had gone for Hera, because you do need to rely on a, a, a bit more spacing, I think, with your fish if you're Spanish. Uh, it it kind of kept him in that game. And he did a really good job, obviously, but you took the control there. Um, Final game, Viper, Acropolis. Uh, I, I, kind of a two-parter here. Were you initially thinking that you were going to use Chinese on Acropolis when you had Regicide Fortress uh, as a possible home map? And how do you, like, if you had to choose between Chinese or Hindustanis, obviously forgetting the result, how do you see that particular matchup uh, going in terms of, like, which city you prefer? Yeah, so I always plan to use Chinese on Acropolis. Okay. Use either Acropolis or Arabia. Um but yeah, Acropolis was the plan. I would, I would use Pulse on Red Side Fortress. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, because he, he will have Cumans there. And I was thinking, if because you already start with a castle, right? So if you get that farm you're going, you can do that unique tech and just spam knights forever, right? Mm, and that should yeah. be able to hold the Cuman. At least that was my mind, mind like thought process. Uh, obviously, we didn't get to see how it played out. But yeah, uh, Chinese, Hindustan is, I think I prefer Chinese still. They're just insanely good in general, right? You can do whatever you want in terms of tech uh but yeah obviously harold i i thought i had such a big lead when i killed those bills in the woodline and whatnot but i wasn't sure about his follow-up so apparently he just added two and three and four town centers so i was i could have been more aggressive probably early on with my crossbows but i just wanted to play it safe after i took uh after i killed all those bills in his woodline but um yeah, at the same time, I feel like I did decent damage, but yeah, once he got those camels and light cavalry rolling, it started to become quite scary. And um, I was definitely worried about the um, Ghulam switch, but I think tacking into Cavalier was a correct decision for me. And I still felt like I had plenty of map control, and his gold must be suffering because he was making so many camels and then Ghulam as well. Mm -hmm. And I was just hoping I could like slowly trade off. And my, my game plan there was pretty much to play for wood control, <laughs> actually, because. I didn't feel like I could break him through the middle. So it was like raid and play for wood control was kind of the, the plan. What do you think, you and Hera are both known for your really great super late game play, right? What do you think the difference is be like stylistically between the two of you and how you go about it? I haven't really thought about that before. Let me think. A know, question he... Viper hasn't been asked in an interview. <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm You've done, done, done it. <laughs> Stylistically different. I, I think I think Hera late last couple of years has become a lot more similar to me in Imperial Age compared to mm -hmm. before. 
Um, he places like safe castles, map control, gets his farm equal and raids. Uh, maybe his focus is a little bit more on that aspect of just like getting that farm equal and start spamming raiding units. While I might be more about position, like take secure areas and whatnot, and then take it from there. Um, I don't know. I, I think our Imperial Age is probably quite similar. Okay. So Viper, this. This whole format, right? Obviously, we you just won the final and everything, and I'm happy to see you played so well. But the whole format's kind of designed around rotational leagues, uh, promotion, relegation, mm -hmm. something that you're very familiar with, with Premier League. And um, we saw, per my assessment, five players get relegated out of Platinum and go down to Gold uh, for the next season. So what do you think that like this type of system does for the competitive scene. What do you think that even means that five players like Nika, Vinchester, MBL, Kapoch, Sito, those are the five I was thinking of, have been pushed out? What does that say about competitive AB2? Well, I mean, it goes without saying when the winner of last season is relegated to Gold League in season two. That's <laughs> uh, like you can never imagine, like if you brought football into this, right? Imagine uh, Manchester City gets relegated, right? It's unthinkable. Yeah. Uh, no, it just speaks volumes to how strong the level is now. I think everyone is universal. Like everyone agrees that the level is probably now the closest it's been forever. There are so many players that can win tournaments. Uh, we see so many different winners as well, right? Winchester, ACCM, uh, obviously Leary, Hera, the, the usual, right? And you always have these people like, even though he's a bit of a pleb, like Doubt can still do well, right? He won Red Bull, won Red Bull not too long ago. So... There's so many good players now, and there's so many outsiders to win tournaments and be able to knock out these top favorites more often than before. And I think that is also extremely healthy for the scene. And a league like this as well goes to show how strong people can be. In, right? I mean, you see people in Gold League and like wonder, why are they in Gold League, right? Yeah, He's yeah, such yeah. a good player, right? So, um, like Nile, for example. Uh, well, he's yeah, in it, Silver League now, but... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, he's not in Gold anymore. Have to so it was, it was a good question. Okay. <laughs> Why did you have to bring that up? Come on. Focus, focus on the... Okay, One whatever. game away from second, though. One game away yeah, from that, second. That was insane. I think Nilia improved a lot. No, he definitely has. It was just an easy time to make a joke. Wait, so Viper, are you terrified? Are you shaking in your boots that you're going to be relegated yeah, down to gold for the next season? If this is the, yeah. the like how it works, then yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have a special map script for, for you. Sure. You have to struggle. Lix, Lix has a... Uh, Gotten promoted, right? Yeah, he did. Uh oh. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> please don't put him in my group, please. Lix, Lix, and Vivi. I don't think they would be in oh, the same god. group, but they'll both be in my group. I guarantee it. Uh, uh... <laughs> if, if Huang was there, he would be there too. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Well, um, I guess final question for me. Um, you, there was. It's so funny. There was like a six month period with you, man, where people were shocked. I think it was like. The, the period where uh, the level started to rise and there were events all the time and it was like the first time you weren't winning everything, right? Um, and uh, I know there were some like health concerns at the time then and all these different things. And it seems like now with mixed map tourneys, you've won Warlords, which wasn't that long ago. I forget the exact date. Was that like November or something? I forget. Uh, and now you've won this, which is mixed map. So how do you feel compared to uh, what you think you are capable of as a player? Like, are you 10 out of 10 Viper right now? Do you think you still got some rust to shake off? How do you feel about your ability? Well, obviously I'm playing pretty well, but like regarding my wrist and everything, I will never know how good I would have been if I didn't have those wrist issues, right? That's, sure. Mm -hmm. There's no point speculating or wondering about that. Or if it has, like, would I be better? Would it be worse? Who knows? Who yeah. cares? Uh, I'm playing well and I'm happy with my level and I'm able to, I mean, for a time there, I was worried, worried that I would have to quit, right? Or mm -hmm. continue doing this. So the fact that I'm just able to continue playing is a, is a big thing in itself just for me. Like whether I would have dropped my level and been like top 10, top 15 streamer as long, or player as long as I could continue streaming and doing this, I would still be happy. But uh, I'm very happy that I can still remain competitive. Well, we're happy you're here, dude. It wouldn't be the same <laughs> without you. <laughs> it would not be the same. feels like the world is uh, the way it should be when you're winning tournaments. So congratulations, <laughs> man. It was very impressive. Any words for... Uh, Jordan, we didn't get to interview you after that set, but that set was absolutely insane. And I know oh, Jordan's I mean, a really good friend of yours, and he took you to the limit, dude. He took you to the absolute limit. 
Yeah, but I mean, when you have extra boars compared to the opponent, <laughs> like, okay, well, that's oh where we're going to go with this. God. I was giving you, you know what? I was giving you an opportunity to gas your, your friend up, but I guess, I guess that's where we're going. Okay. Oh, uh, no, he's already gotten plenty of love for that. Uh, I have to point out, though, actually, Jordan tweeted today before the set. He tweeted, Who do you think is going to win? And he said, I think Hera is going to win. He said, He did say that. that. Bit, yeah, that was wow. the motivation. Like, I saw it and I was like, Okay, Jordy. Okay. Wow. So I actually got a bit extra motivation from that. So uh, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, I think <laughs> letting me pass the quarterfinals, but also no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Maybe maybe that was his way of complimenting Hera and boosting his confidence while also like motivating you at the same time. He motivated Which, two people at the same time. That's that would that sounds like Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, thanks again, Viper, for everything, man. Uh, I know there's people are asking about the the egg instead of the GG and all types of funny things. Um, I I won't waste any more of your time. I really enjoyed watching you. And just to uh, expand on what David said, like it it's fun watching a player have like uh, dominance in mixed settings and understanding the small little things in the moment. And you really showed that the last three rounds. It was incredible. Uh, when you you know you lost a game to Barrels. And, uh, you know, the group stage, I was like, okay, I'm not sure if Viper's going to destroy everybody, but you just turned it up a notch. It was so fun to watch. Thanks for that. Thank you. And I mean, I can explain the egg. Uh, sure. It's right next to my keyboard on enter. So sometimes I click enter and I click the A letter as well at the same <laughs> time. Because I don't know, you guys know about my fucked up finger, right? It, yeah. It's like control it... over that thing. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes it, it hits things. Okay. No, it's fine. I, I, I think that was pretty explainable. People just like to have fun with that. So you yeah, might see a lot of eggs instead of GGs going yeah, forward. I can imagine. Yeah. Seven out of 10, I guess. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, thanks again, man. Thanks for joining. Congratulations. Congrats, bro. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye-bye. All right, well, man. That was the 15th time we've had the, <laughs> the call with Viper. Thank you for calling. Apparently, you called me David some point in that call. Who? Him? You called me David. You called me David, apparently. That's what my chat is saying. I think I might have said Dave it and then continued with a sentence. Oh, it's never happened before. I thought it, it felt intimate. <laughs> well, it wasn't intentional, so slow oh, down. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, um, you know, as you said, another final that Viper wins, but it was, it was a really special final for me because what I just said to him is true. The strategy was just so good. It was... So solid. I actually would have really pumped to see polls actually against the human strat because mm -hmm. that seemed like a weird counterplay that we'd never seen before, uh, as well as like maybe Italians against Turks too. But um, the guy's good. What can we say, man? He's really good. He deserves it all. Uh, what was your what are your closing thoughts, I guess, on Titans League season two, Dave? Because we covered a lot of this over the last two months. I loved it. I loved it. I could sit for, like, it's not just the games that I love. The games got progressively better. Like, it just kept building and building and building and building. I think it's a perfect period of time as well because I'm just starting to get tired of the maps. Sure. Yep. No, I get <laughs> so, that. So it, it's great. Um, <clears throat> But I could sit for an equal amount of time as watching the games, just looking at how the groups are going to play out, like, when we're halfway through or near the final days, right? So I love it. Also, Gold League, we got some promotions that were unexpected. Platinum League, we got some demotions that were unexpected as well. And I don't know how long it's going to be until Season 3, but I'm already looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the event. It's pretty pog, as I tweeted yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, glad to have you. Yeah, dude. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for everything. It was awesome. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I will, um, in the past, I've, like, waited two weeks, and then I've tried to sum up events, but I feel like it's good to do it immediately after. So mm -hmm. I think tomorrow I'll, I'll probably toss something up somewhere and just go through some of my thoughts of what I thought we did a good job of and what could have done uh, been done a little bit differently because there's always things that could be done differently. Uh, final shout-out here uh, as well to JBR. Uh, JBR has been admitting the whole event. Uh, he has been on the players about scheduling through the group stage. He's been coordinating gold as well as, well, silver, and then gold and platinum simultaneously, while also making sure people who want to cover things live uh, can do so and, and know where all the information is. So I want to say thanks to JBR. Uh, we had hopped on many calls at weird times because he's in Australia now. So it's like I'm getting on at 11. He's getting up early drinking his coffee just to make sure things worked out. So thank you to him. Uh, and then thank you to T West as well, who cast some with me, but also helped out a lot with the maps. We were creative in some ways there. Uh, and mm -hmm. final thanks to Microsoft too. Uh, I went to this. I went to Microsoft prior to season one, obviously, 
And uh, initially, it didn't seem like it was going to be a possibility for a lot of different reasons. And I I pushed very aggressively and petitioned and said, like, this will be really good. Uh, and it we start now. We can continue this over the course of like a, two years as kind of like a test period. So um, we have not officially confirmed for season three yet, but we are unofficially confirmed for season three, guys. Microsoft's been happy with it. So uh, thanks to all, everyone involved there. And uh, that's it for me, man. Actually, well, I'll do the final thanks later. Thanks for, for stopping by, man. I had a good time. Yep. Thanks for all the cast, dude. Thanks for the tournament. I'll see you later, man. All right. See you. Peace. And uh, the final thanks that I would like to give now that Dave's gone. Uh, I also would really like to thank Hardy and, and Kaylee. I don't know if they're watching right now or more specifically Hardy uh, and Ugly. Uh, not calling her Ugly. That's actually her username. Uh, guys. If you were trying to follow Titans League in VOD form, a lot of work was put into making that happen. Uh, we, you know, upgraded my system recently, so I suppose I could also say thank you to Willis uh, for helping upgrade the system. And, uh, well, we put in a ton of work um, to make sure every recording on YouTube is in 4K quality. And then we upped, we, we ramped up the production onto the Extras channel on YouTube. I've got to check now, but the Extras channel is kind of new. Almost 20,000 subscribers on a new YouTube channel. And tons of views. Like, how many views did this channel have over the last month? Let's see. Mm, da, 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 da. Apparently, a million views in the last 28 days. Now, I know that the million views didn't all come from you guys, but to some degree, it probably did. So that means a lot to me. Thank you. The channel as a whole just crossed 2 million views there, and that's an extra channel. And we've also had the main channel, and that's been a lot of work on my part to cast all the games. Again, 260-some games, not counting silver, uh, but uh, also for Hardy and Ugly to make sure everything was edited, had a thumbnail, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I want to just say thanks for that. Uh, and then also to all the viewers who showed up today, we had a lot of people. We had a lot of kind words, uh, stars, and whatever else. So thanks for jumping through the hoops to get here. Thank you, Moritz. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, David. Thank you, Riley. Thank you, everyone, for the stars. Um, I have not worked this hard on anything I've ever done. I've never casted that many games over the course of a two-month period ever, with no exceptions. It's not even close. Um, the work-life balance has been abysmal, but the work has been good, and the, the players have delivered good games. And in particular, I'm happy with it not just for like the top 10 names that you guys probably love, but the gold players and the silver players, because I've seen uh, players be motivated by the format and wanting to move forward. So um, thank you guys.